going on, everyone? It is episode 176, recorded on Sunday, July 30th, 2023. I'm Drew, and hey, John, what did the saggy boob say to the other saggy boob? Hello. If we don't get support here, people are going to think we're nuts. <laughs> ready for an all new episode of the dads after dark show remember it can get a little dirty at times so very naughty and now your hunky hosts john and drew hey everyone on tonight's episode we are going to spill the beans for dads in denver live for extra life and all the details that come along with it we might talk about the hottest characters of the year so far and we wrap up another monthly mayhem, announce the winners, and put another one in the record books. John, how are we doing? Because I'm living in fucking hell this weekend. I see we chose beer tonight. Beer. Beer over the coffee tonight. Cheers. Beer, beer over coffee. It has been a busy week, dude. This has been a busy, annoying week. That's that Game Boy one. That's the Game Boy one. I um, yeah. I uh, what has happened this week? First of all, I want to I want to give a little eulogy for my New York Mets. Eulogy. Season is over. Uh, they traded their closer uh, mm. four days ago, and the, the trade deadline I think is uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, and uh, and then today officially they traded away Max Scherzer, future Hall of Famer. Oof. Um, good trade for the Mets. Honestly, I was actually you know, not so excited that he was going to be hanging around next year too. He's kind of lost it a bit and they got a good piece for him. They got Ronald Acuna Jr.'s uh, little brother. If you know who it's, Ronald Acuna Jr. I is. I don't, but I thought of the other day I was laying in bed and I watched, I was, I was watching uh, the Mets were playing the Red Sox. The Sox. And, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It was, they, they, they put like a pinch hitter in, and it was just this big Jack dude. Oh, not jacked, but like big dude, just big boned. Okay. Like Danny the, Berger. That's Danny yes. Berger. Yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah, I was like, oh boy. Yeah, I think it struck out though. But it was he had like eight fall tips in a row, and then it was Oh, I remember. I, I almost touched you. He did have a home run in that series, though. They the Mets won did the he? first game, and then okay. just like they have done all year long, they'll win that first game and then they'll just lose the next two and score one run or something like that. Ugh. Um, so that's over. Uh I got to see Oppenheimer. Nice. Very and exciting. um one to ten. Uh ten. I, I mean it's so here's the deal with Oppenheimer. It's a three hour movie. Mm -hmm. It's it's Christopher Nolan. I mm -hmm. I regard him as the greatest filmmaker ever. Um, uh, everything, he does, everything he does is worth watching. Right. Inception, Interstellar, everything he's done is is worth watching. The Dark Knight trilogy, of course. Hmm. It's just that it may not be. I don't usually watch historic like history pieces. Yeah. Biopics, yeah, yeah. that sort of thing. So I kind of. For the last two years, I've been a little annoyed, like, oh, I don't watch an Oppenheimer yeah, historical movie, but it was incredible. So it, well, in, so it's a 10 movie. It should win Best Picture and all that jazz, but it's yeah. not going to be in my top three favorite I movies from Christopher Nolan either. Did you ever watch the uh, Chernobyl HBO series? I want to see that. I, see, that I, was, yeah, I feel like it's the same thing. Like, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was intriguing. Mm -hmm. Um but at the same time, like, yeah, it's Chernobyl. I mean, it, you kind of know, kind of know it, right? I mean, I'm not saying you know the low-level details. I should know it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you should know the history of it, but, like, maybe not. You should that, watch that. was the that. same I, guy. I, I'm going to watch it. That's the same guy that did The Last of Us. So uh, Yeah, you, I think you'd like it. Yeah, I, I'm not on HBO Max right now, but when I get back on, I'll, I'll definitely watch that one. I think it's just, like, four episodes, right? It's not long. Four to six. Yeah, yeah I, I yeah. forget what it is. Yeah. Um, I was going to watch Oppenheimer on the first day and then my motherfucking Wi-Fi went out the night before. And um, I remember that? Yeah, I don't want to even go through this story because it was such a nightmare. But CenturyLink has been a reliable uh, fiber provider for four years for me. And the fiber went out it, the the box outside my house. The 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 door was open on it. Weird. I think maybe when we got our house painted, they opened it. And so it's been closed through all of the like the big rain uh, and it just went out. 
I tried fixing it and do all this stuff. I was on customer service past midnight on the side of my house, pitch black, trying to figure out the box and all that. And uh, the next morning, they told me this was on August 22nd, I want to say. July? Uh, No, July 22nd. Yeah. And they said they can have a service tech come to our house like August 1st. And he was like, what? And you're Are like, you- I work from home. Like, I I, I need. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be the guy that says I work from home. A lot of people do. But like, oh, you my do. God, like a week and a half. You're going to make me wait to get someone <laughs> to no, look. Yeah. yeah. Nowadays, you can't watch TV. You can't play video. You can't do anything. <laughs> my kids would have murdered me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, I was like, well, maybe we can just sign up for Xfinity. And so I looked it up. Within two hours, I had signed up for Xfinity, went to the Xfinity store, got the hardware, came back home and set it up. Wow. So thank you, Xfinity, even though I don't like you either. Um, you saved me. But I was supposed to go see Oppenheimer and I wasn't able to go see Oppenheimer because I was dealing with that. Um, but I so I, I, I just watched it this past Thursday, but it's nice. great. I haven't done the Barbenheimer thing. I don't think I'll be able to see Barbie, but uh, <sighs> Oppenheimer I tell you, is great. I tell you, Amy took Zoe went without me. Mm hmm. Did you just not want to go? No, I mean, I, I did. I mean, Evan didn't want to go. And it was literally just like a Friday night. And Amy's like, Zoe, you want to go to the movies? And she's like, yeah. And I mean, shit out of luck. Like, what are you going to do? So she didn't even ask you. You were like, you have to stay. Yeah. Zoe did say she wanted to go see The Haunted Mansion. So maybe I'll go with her to go see that, which um, is one of those movies I could probably <sighs> wait until it comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Turtles comes out this week as well. That's so that might already. be a. That's already out. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that might be. We might go that see that as a family. I am just not into that movie. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I, mean, I haven't seen that. It. I don't like the voicing. I don't like the animation. I like and the animation. I haven't seen the whole movie. I'm just seeing the trailer. But like, yeah. I am so I'll, I might try to watch it when it streams. But I am so not interested in that movie. Is it? Maybe huh. it's not out yet. I thought. I Speaking thought of movies, that. you know what I watched this weekend that I absolutely. You know when you have like just kind of low expectations and it, it seeds that, so it's like, wow, I really liked that movie, Dungeons and Dragons. Like I saw the trailer a while back. I was like, that movie looked entertaining. In my cup of tea. Watched it. It was streaming on Paramount. I want to say, I liked it. It was a lot of fun. I assume it's just not people playing the board game or something. It has nothing to do with the board game. Oh, they really? Could have, okay. They could have just called it anything. It's just a, a fantasy action movie. Okay. So, yeah, right. I, I think you would actually like it as well. I, you I, really I, have to know nothing about Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, I know nothing I, about it. I don't have Paramount, which it is it. Par- but it was Paramount. Yeah. It might have been. Yeah, I think it was. Okay. I think I want to get Peacock. I don't think Paramount is on my list of ones. It might have been oh. on something else as well. It might have been on Amazon Prime. I don't know. I, I, it was on a few when I searched it on the TV. All right. You are right. Ninja Turtles comes out this week. I, for some reason, I thought it was last week. Yeah, I thought it was this week. Um, But yeah. And then my, my family did see Indiana Jones finally. They liked it. Oh, yeah. I, I want to see that still. I had initial reviews where it was bad. And then, you know, everyone seems to like it. I think it's indie. I think it's going to be indie. I mean, it, it's... It's probably decent. It's probably not winning anything. It's just, it's Indiana Jones. So I've had a uh, softball uh, tournament all weekend, John, as I've been updating um, you because it was fun. So it it was. So here's, here's the thing. My, my daughter, God bless her. Like she's not like an athlete in the way where she loves it. Right. I mean, she's actually decent. Um, so what it was is there's this this team they were trying to put together. It was a bunch of girls. It's like one of those travel competitor te- teams. And Zoe knows a few of the girls on there. So they needed girls to put a team together to play in this tournament. They didn't even have like a team that already existed. It was like a, a certain age group. So they asked her, and you know, we asked her, and she she's not like into it. She doesn't get like excited to go to the games. When she goes, she plays. Um, so she's like, yeah, I want to try it. So they had two practices, and then they had games. Um, she did awesome so there was 14 teams it was all weekend long there's like seven games total um they finished the, like the the playing seeds they finished in fourth place so they did like a bye to the semifinals um they the, in the semifinals they played a team listen to this um no they had to play it was like the that they won like the the quarterfinals in the semifinals they played a team john that was for the season 31 and 0 undefeated and they smoked them sits to um they, they 
And how do you go thirty one and zero and you, you just lose six two to some team I know, that they just smoked them? They just formed together, like, like dominated the game. Wow. Um, they went to the finals and and they did get they got smoked in the finals. I think they would just beat. You know, these girls are eight years old and eight nine years old, and they're just out in the sun all day playing four games in a day. Yeah. Um, but God bless Zoe. Like I said, she she's she's she tries. She's not great, but she doesn't know any of these girls. She's the first time she's ever played in a competitive team, and um, she went eight for ten in the tournament. That is really good. Really, like really impressed. I was proud of her. Um, so in the semifinal stand, listen to this. So I'm sitting in my little folding chair, minding my business with with Evan and my wife, and like these older guys sit behind us, like grandpas like i think like the grandpas of of a kid on the team and like right off the bat they're this is when we're playing the 31 and 0 team so there's there's tension in the air and like i i don't really know a lot of people on these teams because it's we're new to the team and, and i know zoe's like you could bench her the whole game and she's just happy to be there she's just a social butterfly she's just she's there for fun um so these guys start making comments like Oh, that was an error. You like that's gonna hurt us. Like when, when, like when a girl My would God. miss a fly ball, right? That, right, which like, happens like, at this age range. <laughs> of course. Like, why would you throw that? Like screaming, kind of like. And then they started like, like really to grind it into stuff. Like, and a ball got hit to Zoe, like a pop fly, and like, you know, she's again, she's not a superstar. She didn't like run into it. She kind of was a little timid. She's a little afraid, and she like kind of missed the pop fly. And then the guy was like, she didn't even fucking move. Did she even try? You're like, Oh, my God. Yeah. So, like, I turned around and I said, hey, listen, I said, I'm not going to sit here and listen to you two bitch about these <laughs> eight year old girls all day. I said, it's uncalled for. And the guys were like, oh, and my wife's like, you know, her like the face dropped and like the other parents kind of looked at me. But I think they knew I was right. Oh, you're their hero. Yeah, you're you're the one who's going to yeah, say something. Because, yeah, because like they're sitting like directly behind us and all these other parents, and like they don't know whose parents of whose kids are on the team. Right. Like, there's one. This one poor girl. It's a little bit larger, and the girls. She's like, oh my god, you didn't even try. Look how lazy you are. I'm like, you like you can't say these things to eight year old girls. Yeah. And their parents. Yeah. So he's just like, oh, yeah, 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 shut up. Like like he had nothing. I just and my wife's like grabbed my arms like Andy just just let it go and i'm like like all right but they stopped all of a sudden they stopped like, <laughs> so when Aiden goes by and he comes over to me he's like you know i'm real sorry you're absolutely right i was a little bit out of line there i'll keep it down and i was like fuck yeah i i, I didn't even <laughs> say like i didn't even say like it's okay i was just like yeah you know they're just trying to out there have fun yeah like, I, like, I'm, like, I'm not gonna give it and be like oh it's no big deal because it was it like, is a big deal yeah this you isn't like you don't go it's not going to major league baseball no. and, and, and heckling this is these are kids even in competitive softball yes. it's still eight-year-olds they're just trying yes i get it they're, they're learning they're trying like they're not you can't let them get upset like they, they're still learning some of the basics and the yeah. rules so i was i was proud of myself but like that that shit that bothers me. Like, like, even if it wasn't my daughter, like, you don't know the other kids and what's going on. But yeah, so no, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said something. That 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 is that is infuriating. Like, what are you doing showing up and yeah. bashing on eight year old? Go- Plus, the reason why people in the pros are so good is because they have played their whole life and made mistakes and learned from them and all that. That's what this is. They're, what are you going to be like? Oh, don't play it. You're four years old. Don't play baseball. You're going to make errors. I know. Like this That's is you learn. This is when you do that. <laughs> so yeah. dumb. So- Goodness gracious. But that was me all weekend. Seven softball games, 80 minutes a game. Um, pr- God bless Evan's soul. Just sat there. All- <laughs> right. He doesn't even get the whole, like, my daughter. I'm proud of my daughter. He's just like, it's my stupid sister. Evan legit boos her when she comes up. To the bus. Like, Evan, you're making a scene. <laughs> nope. I caved. We, we, in between games, at a Walmart down the road. I told you, Evan, I, he bought a... Um, I told him he did like a little toy or something. He bought a a Snorlax Squishmallow, John. Oh my god! I can't make this shit up. The so. kid is fucking addicted. <laughs> yes, <laughs> gotta collect them all. All right, that's all I got. Well, folks, it is smooth set summer. Has as we have been saying, get out there buy your manscapes. You know, it's that time of the year. If you're going to the beach and you have some little pubes showing, that's on you. And nobody wants to see that, John. Right? I mean, you gotta be fresh. You gotta be smooth. You gotta be clean. I mean, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be uh, manscaping before I come over to Denver, just in case, John. 
just in case. You never know. You never know. You never know what might happen. Um, and the best way to do it is, is, is to get deals and free shipping, right? So you do get 20% off and free shipping with our code NINDADS, N-I-N-D-A-D-S. Um, I'm actually need to make another order soon for some some more shampoo. Maybe I did a little bit of foot deodorant. Uh, you never know. You know, we're going to be stinky. You know, we're streaming for a long time. We're going to talk about that soon. You're going to make sure you have deodorant and, and ball deodorant and foot deodorant. And all these things that you're going to need. And and that's for all these people that have extra life coming up that are going to be streaming. Uh, you I'm going to bring a stick of deodorant just in case you guys forget or whatever. And make I appreciate sure. that. Yeah, yeah. We'll spray around. It's going to be fun. I can't wait to talk about it a little bit Me later. Me too. Manscaped.com. Go and get your stuff. Let's get to the meat. Oi, that's a good one. The meat. So immature, but I love it. Anywho, to the meat. Before we start the meat, once again, check out our Substack, dadsafterdarkshow.substack.com. We got articles. We got the videos. We got our socials. We got our merch store. Our socials have changed. Uh, bit, we are we are no longer on Twitter. Um, I, I guess it's an announcement for Drew, but um, uh, <laughs> Twitter is no longer Twitter. Twitter is no longer on Twitter. Twitter is renamed X. Um, I was not about to go adjust it. Is that to, true? To, yeah, they renamed it because their owner has brain worms. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Twitter service has gone downhill in the last few months or so. It's 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 just weird the way paid people float to the top and they have the worst opinions because these are people that are paying eight dollars a month. Um, it's just it's hard to really get, I don't know, good content. But we are on threads. We are uh, and dads after dark on threads and Instagram and TikTok. So come join us. We got to get more people on threads, too. I'm trying to get uh, Nick from even, Game Pass News on there. I don't have it downloaded. I should probably get on that. I mean, if you have Instagram, then you just click a button or two and you're on threads. The only I downside do, is there's a few either. things they need. One of them is they need a desktop browser app. Uh, you can access some things by going to direct URL. So it's almost there. I would say any week now it's going to be there. I can't wait for that. That'll get me to post more. Um, having to pick up my phone and type on the little keyboard is whatever but that's where we are we're doing pretty good we've got over 50 followers so we're doing we're doing pretty well is that good i mean it's it's a start it's it's all it's all starting gotta start somewhere I'm not really a social media guy but i respect you and i appreciate you john you I'm, talk I, from time to time listen i'm downloading threads as we speak that's useful so if i already if i if i already have facebook instagram i should be I instagram should your instagram if you have instagram threads will just yeah, you'll see. It'll add you right Logging in very, very quickly. And dads after dark. You probably don't want me to do that. I need to log in as myself. Uh, well, no. I mean, that would be our account. If you want your own account, then you you should use your own Instagram. I'll use my own so I can like us. Okay. Get us 51 followers. There you go. Um, I'll what else? Complicated. I'll do that later. Yeah, yeah. Do that later. <laughs> uh, big news this week. It was a nice shadow drop. Nintendo Switch Online has uh, released Oracle of Seasons, yes. Oracle of Ages. Pumped. 2001 those games came Woo. out pre 9 11 now have you played these i have not me either played them i played like 30 minutes of one one time and i couldn't save it um and one of the reasons i was going to get an analog was to to play this one and then i have my new system and i was going to play it i might still play it on the new one but oh it's so cool it's here and you get rewind so if you want to be one of those people that wants to play through the game but if you die you don't want to like fuck around you can use rewind it's uh, for Game Boy Color. Very exciting. I'm going to uh, start with Seasons, I think. I don't think you can go wrong with either. I think they're shorter games, but then you get progression in the next game if they give you codes or something like that. I don't know how it works. I assume it goes based on save files or something like that. But, oh, this yeah. looks so good. Very exciting. I can't wait. I should have found time to fit it in. Um. And then we have uh, Mortal. Did you see the announcement for Mortal Kombat Pack 1? I did not see Pack 1. So this game is not out yet. I think it comes out in September. But they announced what the first uh, DLC pack of fighters will be. Oh, oh it's a good list. Okay. And I, I didn't know most of the guys. It was funny. I actually I started listing them down. Uh, I was like, news guy. I don't know. John Cena peacemaker, dude. I don't know. Some old MK guy. And then it was Homelander from yes, the Yes, Home. Did you see the new trailer for uh, the new? I don't know if it's a new season or is it a spinoff? I think they've just, just yeah, there is a spinoff coming. I'm not sure if I'm interested in the spinoff, but the I got to look and see. The spinoff looks almost like, like uh, 
Harry Potter-ish type thing. Like where they're at like a school and there's competitions between the different things. And hmm. I don't know, I, I, it looks decent. I'm I'm a fan of the uh of the of the, the the lore series. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I was burned by Fear the Walking Dead. Remember that spin-off of Walking I, Dead? I mean, I think we were just burned from the Walking Dead period. I think it just True. went too long and too far the same thing. Sometimes just being in the universe isn't enough. It's like I like these characters. Like mm. Supernatural did it recently too, where they had uh the Winchesters or something. And it's like I like these characters. I'm not I'm not in love with the universe. I'm in love with the characters. And I don't know. So, I'll, but I'll take a look and see. I don't, I'm just waiting for season four. Uh, hmm. But that looks good. Uh, so anyway, the uh, the characters are Omni Man, which is the I'm not a Spider Man zealot, but it's the what? What would you say? What was the guy from Spider Man who does the? Um, he's the news reporter that hates Spider Man. So that's JJ, a, yeah, JJ so Omni Man, I guess, is a character. I didn't know that. Um, Ermac is in here. Peacemaker is going to be in here. Uh, Quan Chi, I don't know, some guy from a comic somewhere. That was a Te- chick. Takeda, who was a guy who was a Mario Kart character, Mario Kart, <laughs> Mortal Kombat character previously. So I can't write MK. Yeah, I don't write MK. And then uh, Homelander, who I think is the the highlight here. I, my, so Mortal Kombat has always been good with having bonus characters that were cool. They've had like, I think, Terminator and Sylvester Stallone. They get some really offbeat okay people so that's it's hmm. not a surprise that homelander is in here or peacemaker is in here homelander's from the boys by the way i know we didn't actually say it. that the that's boys. the show i was talking about the boys hbo the boys. i think it is uh no it's amazon prime is it yeah you watched it it's on amazon prime I, you watch Am- i can't keep track john <laughs> Good there's not that many shows on amazon prime they do have Lord some of the good Rains. shows all that matters Rains of oh, Power, i forgot baby. about that one yeah see uh, if you haven't seen The Boys, watch The Boys. The boys. It's so good. I remember when you it described that scene to me in season two. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's, oh, yeah. there's some memorable scenes throughout that show, but it's very good. <laughs> um, so that's it. And so, yeah, the last last piece of the meat, the last the grizzle that's left <laughs> is uh, <laughs> let's talk about our extra life event here, Drew. Extra life. Uh, we are going to be doing this is our first extra life. We've been doing this show for fucking three, four years. Feels longer. And we've never done extra life except one year. You and Hambone. We did, did it. We birdies did, um, and beers. Birdies and beers. Beers and birdies. Yeah. We raised a decent amount of money. Yeah, we did. Um, We drank a lot of beer and we played um, Mario Golf Super Rush. I want to say it was two hours. We had the whiteboard going on for every birdie we made. We donated a dollar and stuff like that. We ended up donating like $78 each. I donated $6.90 a lot. I remember that. <laughs> um, the reason why we have never done an event is because we really don't have a live streaming rig. That's That was the reason. And you did it with Hambone because at the time, he doesn't do it anymore. At the time, Hambone would do Twitch streaming. Mm. So that's why that happened. But it was this easy. year... Yeah. We have set up Twitch streaming. We've done mm-hmm. some test streams, if anybody has seen those recently. And we are going to be in Denver. You are coming. Hambone's coming. Oh, we're mm-hmm. all coming. You promised me Casa Bonita's. Don't let me down. I did not promise you Casa Bonita. <laughs> and it's not open yet, so it's probably not happening, but we'll see. I signed up for the newsletter just in case. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I anticipate <laughs> not. But you guys are flying in August 18th, about 1 o'clock. Uh, Kevin and I, we are Coos and I, we're going to go pick you up at the airport and uh, yeah, we're going to have a fun little time. Uh, I think the plan right now is um, we're going to goof around, have some fun, do whatever. Uh, and then that evening, we're going to go to the Nintendo live event. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to get Michelle uh, and and my kids um, to meet us there. And uh, and I think uh, Kevin's kids, I think we'll we'll go up there, too, because school is starting that week. We have school that week. Ridiculous. I know. So um, but yeah, we're going to do Nintendo Live. We'll get some dinner, all that stuff. And then Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. East Coast people, they don't know Mountain Time. Uh, Nope. Uh, We are going to be doing our marathon. Is this earlier in the year than you would think? Yes, it is. 
this is actually when the tabletop marathons are going on. Uh, mm. Ironically enough, we didn't plan that; it just happened to be. But Extra Life has tabletop marathons this year. But we're going to be doing a 12-hour straight-through marathon, as much of us as possible, except for some pee breaks. Um, but we're going to try to do the whole 12 Listen, hours. All I got to say is, <laughs> this is not going to happen very often, right? You need to plan accordingly. One, you got four of the best guys around together in the same room. The things that could happen, no, no, no. The things that will happen will be nothing like you've ever seen before, and that will not be repeatable. That's just right, don't happen. overhype us now. <laughs> oh, I'm overhyping it because I I I guarantee it, right? I mean, we get John over there meeting up with Coos today on a Sunday just to make sure everything's going to work properly. We're spending lots of money to make sure we have the best technology ready to be out there to give a, a, a solid streaming service uh, available to you guys with high quality cameras, individual microphones. Oh, my God, guys. This but is this the most is... overhyped thing. We don't have high quality cameras here. We have <laughs> we have like a five year old camera Coos has in his couch. <sighs> no, we got you went and bought wireless individual mics that we could be so we're all mic'd up. This is going to be like when you're watching baseball and the first baseman is mic'd up. That's what's happening here. You're you're watching us really mic'd is? up while we're playing games. I mean, we are mic'd freaking up. You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, we might be drinking a little beer here and there, but gonna, it's going to be a good time. This could be the last time we invite Drew to Denver. I mean, Fact. honestly, this could that be a one shot deal. This could be. I better not blow. Well, I will blow my load, but <laughs> I, it's going to be fun. And and John, why don't you tell them why they should actually watch? Not just because of the entertainment value, but why should they watch? Why? You should. Well, you should. OK, well, you're, you're going to have a lot of fun. We are doing a 12 hour marathon. Because honestly, we're getting older. We can't do 24 hours. God bless you people that even try and you feel miserable about it. We're not doing 24 hours. I've yourself. seen the Nintendo dads fall I'm asleep young. on camera. I've seen Marty fall asleep on camera at three in the morning. OK, like we're not doing that. Why were you watching is the first question. Oh, I love when them. I love when they do their I love three when in the there. morning. Why were you up? Yeah. Uh, what? Oh, my God. I no. I don't know. No, I, I think I watched a recording. No way I'm watching. <laughs> um. But yeah, we are going to be uh, playing for Extra Life. We are part of the Nintendo Dads, I don't know, fundraising group. So we're 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 part of the team. We're going first, and um, yeah, no, we're we're going to be playing uh, for the Aurora Children's Hospital. That is uh, Aurora, Colorado, is um, south of us. It's a little bit south of me, and uh, all of my kids have been there at one time or another. Uh, Sebastian, he was born with a port wine stain on like half his body, so when he came out. He was like half red. He looked like a half strawberry. Um, it was it was crazy. And so he under underwent uh, laser treatments for years at Children's Hospital. He'd have to go down there when he was a baby man. They would use this little laser gun and they said it feels like being snapped with a rubber band oh. and they would have to zap him like 200 times. And he's like six months old. Jesus. So you can imagine how horrific that is for for the parents um, let alone the baby, but like, you know, he, he doesn't remember it, but we remember it. And, um, you know, watching your, your kid just cry for 20 minutes because they're just being zapped by a laser and they don't know what's going on. And they're wearing this mm. su like sun visor over their eyes. They can't see. But yeah, like we used to take him down there like once a month uh, and whatever. So some years ago, he, he didn't have to go anymore. But um, but yeah, we'll be raising money for them. And uh, yeah, we, we, we're, we're going to be streaming on Twitch. Our channel is Dads After Dark Show. So come join us uh, if you want to donate. And our donations are going to be a little a little silly. So so pay attention to this. Um, if you donate before our stream begins on August 19th, and we encourage it greatly. If you donate before our stream begins, when you donate. Pick one of the four oh, dads ho, ho, ho. here. You can pick a me, John. You can pick a Drew. You can pick a Coos. You can pick a Hambone. Every time we play a game that's a four-player game and that dad wins the game, you will get double the lotto balls. So for every dollar that you donate, you're going to buy a lotto ball for prizes we're going to give out at the end of the stream. Oh, we love balls. We love balls, just like Mayhem. But if you picked Hambone, and he won three of the matches, then you will get double 
for that match. Can we get one of those bingo things that you like spin and do like a live draw and maybe like Sunday morning? Ah, uh, no, because the number gets so high. There's going to be so many balls in that room. Like, I just, just want to put my face in the balls and just yeah. like, pull them out with my mouth. No, not if you. But if you okay. pick the best dad, me, guys, pick me. Listen, I will lead you to the promised no, land. It's false because we're going to play ages of mages. And who do you think is a guaranteed win? This guy. That is, that's not even a competitive game. That's not even we'll going to figure count. out a way. Most points. So just the most kills. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a way to play it, John. All right. We'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, if you donate before, you can name a dad. You can donate multiple times and name different dads or whatever. But we will give you bonus balls every that's time. Smart. That dad wins. Don't, donate uh, four times, right? Pick every dad. Yep. At Guaranteed the end of the event. Double balls. Uh, maybe not right at the end of the event, but uh, very soon after that event, we're going to do our, our drawings and then we will give out prizes. We're going to have tons of, of games to give out and merch and all sorts of stuff. We don't have it yeah. all completely figured out yet. Um, there's going to be tons of stuff to win and you can win multiple times. If you win your lotto balls out, but you're, you're in for the next prize. So you can win multiple times. So the more you donate, the more your selected dad wins, the more chance you have to win multiple oh, prizes. Sick. And then during oh. the event, uh, Kuz, would you mind? I'm trying to talk about the kids here. Uh, during oh, the event, <laughs> you go in the corner. Uh, during the event, Kuz is going to be giving away eShop prizes. So if you are watching us, there is going to be little contests that pop up at any time during the event. Be there. You can win 10 bucks, 20 bucks, eShop cash instantly right then and there. I mean, we're so, going to be going to Nintendo, um, the, the live events. What are they mm -hmm. called? Like the night before, maybe we'll get some extra goodies to be. I mean, we're going to have a shit ton of stuff. We got some maybe dads at some dark merch as well. So maybe some plushies. Who knows, John? I mean, endless opportunities. There will be maybe a hundreds, car. Hundreds, five hundreds of dollars worth of prizes. <laughs> five hundreds of dollars. You heard it here five first. Five hundreds of dollars. Maybe you can more. donate right now if you want to. The link is bit.ly slash dads in Denver live. That's dashes in between. So bit.ly slash dads dash in dash Denver dash live. Moot. It's going to be fun. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait for the uh, event. I can't wait to meet you. Um, I, I'm, we're going to hug. We're going to hug. We're, we're going to hug and we're going to take pictures uh, mm -hmm. We're going to go down on each other. I mean, it's going to be great. When we, when we hug, our mm -hmm. dits will probably be touching. They'll be, <laughs> they'll be like just like two thins of like articles of clothing between our penises. It really is. Think of I, that. I never thought about, you know, when you hug a lady, you, like there's always like women always like hug and they lean, you know, because mm -hmm. they don't want to just smash their their boobs in your chest. Right. Yeah. Um, when guys hug. And guys hug like, out. do we? I mean, we don't really smash our genitals towards each other, but I might try. I wonder if I've ever like gotten some through that. Now, next time you hard, you're going to think about it. I'm going to be thinking about it. Do our penises touch? It'd be good. It's going to be good. We're going to do, uh, we'll probably do a little, um, probably do a little practice stream the night before. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. I don't, I don't know. If we need yeah. To what are we going to do? We're going to play night. some games. We're going to be playing some games that Friday night for sure. Maybe we'll do an unofficial live stream Friday night. It's not maybe. The, the, Maybe, maybe, maybe I, we're going to be playing more games than just the 12 hour marathon. I'll have to try some VR. Maybe we can stream me playing some VR. <laughs> oh, you're going to put that VR headset on and we're going to fucking abuse you. I can't I do mean, it while I'm drinking. We, yeah, that's just no, that's that's going to happen. Um, but I can't wait. It'll be fun. Um, I'm going to be sleeping over with you guys. We're all we're all going to yes. be crashing at Coozes. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to we're going to take Drew and, and Hambone out. Uh, I think the plan we talked about it today was maybe hit. Uh, we want to take you guys to Red Rocks because sure. you can walk right into Red Rocks. OK, it's not like a stadium where you can't go in. You can go in and okay. you can walk all over whatever. Um, so we're going to do that. And uh, we're going to try Casa Bonita. Um, we don't know if we'll be able to. We're definitely doing Nintendo Live. It's going to break in. We've got a whole list of possible things. We can't do it all, of course. Uh, the time is a factor, but um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hmm. Yep, there you go. Nice. Um, we'll have more details as we get closer, and we're going to create a new channel for this in Discord, too. So, yes, well. we're going to definitely do something that, to talk about it, hype about it, post some streams about it. All that good stuff will just be a, a one-stop shop. I can't wait. Let's talk about what Drew and John are playing. Probably something shitty if you ask me, but hey, 
maybe they'll surprise us, right? <laughs> what have we been playing? John, I was in, I don't want to talk about a rut because I wasn't in a rut. I was in a lull where I needed a game, right? This was kind of right before Pikmin 4 came out. I wrapped up Disney Speedstorm Season 2 um, Toy Story, which I did complete. I completed my battle pass. Um, by the way, officially, Disney Speedstorm has announced Lilo and Stitch is the official um, Season 3. In Lilo, you got Stitch, you got Gantu, which is like kind of like the... the Nobody the cares after that. Lilo and Stitch. Right. Nobody That's cares right. about anybody else. Nobody BA. knows who the fuck Gantu is. Fuck you. Everyone knows who Gantu <laughs> is. And the girl Stitch. Nobody knows that girl Stitch name is, but you know, that the pinkish girl one. girl Stitch? What the hell? What? Get your shit together. Who is girl Stitch? She's like pink. Was that like fan porn? What is this? Uh, what is sure. this? She's in like the second movie. There's like four Stitch movies. Get your shit together, there John. There is not. There was one. Oh, no. they have like a straight to VHS one? No, some of them aren't bad, actually. Do you know what VHS? They, they, used, to, they used to call it straight to VHS. Now it's like. I know what that is. I had a lot of Blu-ray. porn that are on VHS. And I had the VH built-in TV player in my room. My goodness. Anyways, I was on a lull. I needed a game to keep me busy until other games came out. So it was time for a Drew game. I went into the deep, darkest corner of the eShop. And I found a new game called Army <laughs> of Ruins. Woo! Army of Ruins. How do you describe it? How do you describe Army it? Army of Ruins. Look this up. It is a dead set replica of vampire survivors. Oh, my God. But more in that Ages of Mages concept. <laughs> Oh, you're really selling this one. With a little bit of Diablo feel. Actually, you know what? Not Diablo. Gauntlet Legends feel. Um, it, it's, it's, I'm going to be blunt. I like this game better than Vampire Survivors. Um, it, it's, again, it's a, it's a dead replica. What I like about this game is, again, if you haven't played, let me rephrase. If you haven't played any of these games, these are like, um, what do you call them? You, they're, you're not. There's no shoot button. It's all auto shoot. And you kind of literally just move around the map and you just kill hordes and hordes and hordes of enemies. Uh, and you pretty much have to survive until a 10 minute mark or 15 minute mark where the boss comes and you have to kill the boss. This game was a lot of fun. There is all the different characters you can unlock, but I like this game because it has a clear vision and objective and a challenge on each level on what you're supposed to do. Like each one has a different, um, objectives that you might have to do upgrade this item kill this boss go find this item hidden somewhere um and then it can you can go into the menus and i'll tell you like if you want to unlock this character here's the objective you need to go do you need to go play the graveyard on level four and you need to unlock this other special like tougher part of the level to do it's pretty straightforward on here's what you need to do uh I, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I like the so, graphic style of it better. Right. I mean, I, I'm really impressed by the fact that the game tells you what to do. I think that is a really good starting yeah. point for a great game. Well, Vampire Survivors did not do that. What's the name of this game? Army of Ruin? Ruins? Army Ruin. Of... Yeah, Ruin. Close enough. Army of no, Ruin. You made fun of me. I went into GameStop the other day to say I wanted to order <laughs> Mickey's D Illusion Island, and the guy fucking almost kicked me out of the store. He's like, what did you order? I said, the fucking Illusion? I don't know the name of it. I'm getting it for my kids. Oh, he said, he... Disney's Illusion Island? Yeah, that, sure, buddy. You know what I fucking meant. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, Army of Ruin, I'm telling you, look this game up. It's maybe six, seven dollars. I honestly enjoyed this game significantly more than Vampire. It, it's I it, it came I out it. yeah it came out two years after vampire so clearly it was like completely influenced by vampires mm -hmm. right guy probably played it and was like oh this game's amazing i'm gonna make one and it's gonna have more color it's more <laughs> color it's more of that like cartoonish type um graphics it, it has you know you can be the straight you can be the wizard you can you can be the thief you can you can be the the warrior type concepts um, and again, there's tons of stuff to unlock, and it's very straightforward on how you do it. Um, so did you really beat it? it? You beat it? 
I no, I I think honestly, this is like a hundred hour game if you try to unlock. If you like hundred percent, there's tons and tons. I then unlocked like five or six characters, and it was like seventeen or twenty percent of the just characters unlocked. Oh my god! And then there's items unlocked, and there's there's other levels unlocked. There's there's like four categories. Um, I if think we I'm were like doing, if we were still doing the bounties, I'd be like, all right, twenty dollar bounty to whoever can 100% this game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do that anyway. Because I, I don't think anybody will do it. It's, it seems like a lot. Yeah. And, and and just like Vampire, this game will, all these types of games, will eventually hit your breaking point or something else shiny will come along because it gets, they're repetitive, right? I mean, yeah. some of them, you know, the early levels were like 10 minutes and then the later ones were like 15 minutes. I mean, 15 or 20 minutes is a long run for a game. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. You get sometimes in these games, you get into these runs where you're not even trying to accomplish something. Pretty, you're just like this tiny little thing. I just want yeah. to get a quarter of the bar filled up to get to the next level, and it just feels like each run is like yeah. diminishing returns. Like I said, it really eased my itch um, for a game that I needed at the time. I had a lot of fun. I'll probably go back every once in a while and do a run or two. Uh, I think Vampires Survivors for Switch comes out August eighteenth. Uh, so you you know two or yeah. three weeks, but we're gonna be playing that. Yeah, but this is, um, I enjoyed it. Army of Ruin. Give it a look up. All right. Um, I played a few games this week, uh, but the one I'll talk about right here is I just want to like wrap it up. Uh, I finished Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm really happy Ooh. that I, I, this is a game I've been wanting to get to for years, and I'm really happy I got to uh, finish it up. It was a lot longer than I thought it would be. Um, I thought I was getting close, and it was just more and more and more. But yeah, this is a remake of the original Final Fantasy VII, but the game is going to be broken into three games. So they really take small details of the original game and really expand it out. Um, the characters are incredible. I, I, I walked away from this game thinking, is this an RPG? And I say that because there are elements of this game that are RPG, but it is really linear to the point where there are these side quests that come up in some of the chapters. And if you don't do those side quests in that chapter, you will lose your opportunity to do that side quest. And so early on, I would just do every side quest that I found and and finish it because I was like, well, I won't be able to do this again. And I don't know if I'll be powerful enough later in the game. So there were times where I wondered, like, how much of an RPG this is. And I really learned by the end of it that this game is really driven by the characters the performances given by all the main characters, Barrett, Cloud, uh, Tifa, Jesse, like they are so good. There's even these supporting characters that you never actually use are so good. And there are so many scenes in this game where it really is emotional and, and you want to save this character and, and, you know, ease their suffering and whatever. They just did an absolutely great job with this game. Story beats are really good. The combat is really good, and it, it it is like a battle system. It's hard to describe, but the battle system is you you attack, attack, attack. You get a little ATB meter that goes up, and you can then use once it once it fills up a, a bar, you can then do a special thing. That includes using items. Like you can't use an item to maybe heal yourself until you have an ATB meter fill up. Okay. Um, or you can use spells or whatever, but you can't just do it whenever. You have to do it with an ATB. And you can switch between the characters while you're fighting. So for the most part, when you are exploring the world, you are always Cloud. But when you're fighting, you can switch and you can take control of Tifa and you can use her skills and then you can switch back and forth. So what's really fun and frenetic is you, uh, you're Cloud, you, um, your ATB fills up, you do a fire spell, and as soon as you launch the fire spell... You switch over to Tifa and then maybe you use her to do a cure spell and then you switch over and you'll actually see the character still doing the spell, but you're now controlling somebody else. So as you go through the game, you get a lot better at that. And the other thing I loved about this game is when I played the original Final Fantasy seven towards the end, it was just getting way too hard. And I didn't understand how um, uh, you the weapons worked with the um uh what do they call it with, with the power ups that they use on those weapons uh i got i forget the name of it and i had really had trouble figuring that out in this game i was able to figure it out a lot better and i was able to follow the story so much better there was major plot points in this game that i didn't realize were happening in the original game because it just really it was hard to keep up with just like the dialogue windows and the lack of 
performance from the characters, but in this one, it really gets into your brain brain. So I, I, I absolutely loved it. Um, I don't know if I'm day one for rebirth or not, uh, when that comes out in the beginning of next year, but man, this is just an incredible game. It looks so freaking good and it makes everything feel realistic around you. And the performances are so great. Um, I had a great time and, um, yeah, I, I recommend this to anybody who hasn't played it on uh, PlayStation. Nice. It's, How many it's hours great. was it? Uh, it was between 30 and 40. Uh, early on, I did all the side quests and everything. But then I think the last chapter, I was just like, forget it. I just want to go and finish this game off. And I was fine. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely over a little over 30 hours, at least. I thought it was going to be around the 20 hour range or so. I was yeah, surprised by bad, how long it was going. But yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, but it was it was fantastic. Thanks. Um, the other games I've been playing, I, I was pl- uh, I've been playing Pikmin Four. John, uh, never played a Pikmin game in my life. So bizarre. Uh, decided to go with it. I was kind of again and talked about that lull and not much else going on right now, and I didn't really have a huge backlog. So Pikmin Four. Now I'm going to say, I've been playing this game solely in co-op mode with my wife um just okay just okay just my wife we only play together on the tv um at first i was letting her play because she seemed like a certain type of game she was having fun but no she likes me playing and she likes to be the co-op if you haven't played co-op in this game yet the best way to think about it is probably similar to like a like uh super mario galaxy uh where you used to throw the star bites with the motion controller it's similar you get to move a cursor around you get to throw rocks um but let me tell you, it's kind of overpowered because any of the bosses or big enemies or things like that, I can kind of stay back and she can literally kill the entire boss by throwing rocks at it. <laughs> so like, I don't have to waste my Pikmin. I mean, don't. sometimes I'll run in and I'll throw some be, because they attack faster mm-hmm. uh, and you can kill the boss quicker. But if I wanted to, I could literally stand back um, and she could kill the entire boss or even the monsters or the little guys. So I went to this game. I honestly knew zero about Pikmin. I didn't know what type of gameplay it was. I just, you know, you knew you would had these little alien looking leaf thing, Majidis, and they, that's it. Uh, it's fun. It's fun. It, I mean, it's, it's, is it like my new favorite series? Am I out there buying plushies of these little Pikmin? No, but like, I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't hate it. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with it. It's It's fun these and again i i can't speak to the other pikmin games i never played them i don't know how different this is john have you been playing this at all or no i haven't i haven't played it yet okay so i have no idea if this is oh yeah this is how all of them are or with certain different you know improve you know, life improvements or if it's completely different but being able to like explore these little maps i guess you could say these little worlds um how they break them down and be able to try to 100 percent them it's that little itch it's that fun so i we did not beat the game. We've been playing for about 12 hours. I want to say we've played and we did not move on to like the next area or the next world, whatever you want to call it until we 100 percented the previous era. You know, we unlocked it at like 50 percent, but we didn't move on. We kept playing it. So we've 100 percented the first two levels worlds mm-hmm. and we um, were about 75 percent of the third one. So we we did a good chunk. We, we we've been we're doing pretty good, and again, I don't want to give away any spoilers because I don't I don't know what is a spoiler and what's not. <laughs> but I'll just say that the wife and I are having loads of fun with it. She asked me we played the other night. She goes, "Oh, you want to just play Pikmin tonight instead of watching TV or a movie?" And I said, "Yeah, let's do it." And um, I like it. Like I said, I'm not gonna on, you know right away go back and buy all the other ones and stuff. But I could see myself maybe picking up, you know, one of the older ones on Switch in in the future and, and giving it a go. Yeah, no, it's exploration in the Pikmin is always fun. Like you just I saw a lemon. There was a lemon on a ridge. I don't know how to get there. Let's go yeah. try to see if we can get the lemon like, like yeah. that. It's like strangely so much fun. I, I can say the um, the early games could be a little more time constrained. So I and I don't remember all the details, but in the first game, you had to get off the planet in 30 days. Or I think it was like you, you had a limited amount of oxygen. You had to get you had to get all the parts to your ship and get off in 30 days 
or you died or it was so over. you weren't ha- trying 100 percent, and you were legit trying to just beat the game yeah you had you had to yeah i think i think you always i, I might be wrong on this but i think you always 100 percent it but um but you you know people try to do it as quick as possible people try to do you know oh, get everything okay. in the, in the so fewest maybe that's number a of days different than this one. yeah like, we don't need to 100 percent a level to move on you need to collect so many let's say points or valued points right. and then lots the next part of the spaceship and the spaceship can move on to the next area but, right yep but yeah this, i mean there's no time limit from what i understand i could be wrong i don't think i hit day 30 no yet. so this one doesn't have a time limit i think the second one or is it the third one you had to collect fruit and the juice would sustain you so you okay. had an unlimited amount of time but you had to keep getting juice to get more time. Okay, so they dropped um, so that they, concept, they, they limit. it seems like. Yeah, and from what I've heard in Pikmin 4, you can ex- you have unlimited days. The days are limited, mm. but that, like the length of time of the day, but you have unlimited days, so you can explore more. It's there's a little less pressure. Yeah. yeah, which is good. I like that yeah. casual part of it, because we've definitely been taking our time. Yeah, and then if you want 100% it, you have the time to go 100%. You don't have to race against the the clock or anything. I love you could do a little, I don't think it's a spoiler, you could you could do a little character. You could create your own character in the beginning, yep. which, was, which was kind of fun, too. That's new, yep. That is, yeah, I figured that was. Cool. I I am, I'm, I am I was going to make it my road trip game. Um, I might start it on my road trip. Uh, something else came up, but um i do i i wanted to play this day one but i was stuck on the next game i'm going to talk about uh which is octopath traveler 2 fucking a you're still playing that thing forever i started playing this one in june because i thought i had a nice window um it has taken a long time so so here's my wrap up on it i hit the 80 hour mark and if you remember the first game there's eight characters, there's four chapters, so there's basically 32 chapters. I did those all back when I played the original game. This game is eight, eight characters. Not every not every character has four chapters. Some of them have five chapters. Some of them have three chapters. So it's a little bit different there. And they also have uh pairs of character. Uh pairs of characters have their own little stories too. So a couple of characters might work and talk to each other and have a little story and that sort of thing. They each have two of those. I did all of it. I did all of the chapters, everything. Jeez. And I'm telling you, there is some level scaling in this game, which is crazy. A lot of these, you know how these games are. There's always somebody who can beat it without having to like completely level grind. But you have to know how certain things interact with each other. And oftentimes they'll say, get this skill, get this skill, get this skill. Well, sure. But like in order to get all of those skills without really knowing that they exist, you're probably really highly leveled too. But if you look at a guide, maybe you can do it a lot more quickly because someone else figured it out for you. Mm -hmm. So I got to the part of the game where I did all of the chapters and then it unlocks this sort of final chapter. And I don't want to talk too detailed about it, but this final chapter sort of has its own adventure. They actually tell you, well, we recommend don't overwrite your previous save because once you start this chapter, you can't go back. So are you sure you want to go in? And I thought this was really cool. And now I realize it's not super cool. It has some problems. First off, are you sure you want to go in? I don't know. What do I need to have? I don't know. Maybe maybe if the game could tell yeah. you and go, you know, you should get some more health potions before you come in or something. I don't know. Like, is yeah. it one? Is it one battle? Is it five battles? Like, I had no idea going into this chapter what I needed to do. And I quickly realized that I probably I was using a lot of my high leverage weapons on the final chapter because i thought once i finished it that was the end of the game i didn't realize there was a final boss i should have known that because the first game did but yeah like i i went through and you have to do these various things in here and they kind of tell you this is really weird i got frustrated with this they said oh uh you know your map they said something to the effect of your map is useless here so just journey and explore and i'm like ooh, this is like a new world and a new map, and I just have to journey. And I started walking around. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to draw a little map and help myself. I soon realized I was just walking in the same overworld that the game is, <laughs> except for I, I was a little bit constrained by uh, the land. And it's like, oh, but I had nowhere to, I had no idea where to go. I was exploring around. I didn't know what I was looking for or anything. I knew there were some chalices involved. 
So I, I looked it up. I was like, look, what am I what am I even looking for? I'll figure mm-hmm. it out. And they said, yeah, look at the map and you can see some purple clouds and that's where you need to go. And it's like, wait a minute. So I have to look at the map. So I was frustrated by that. And then, yeah, you can just warp there. You just warp there to where the cloud is. You find the thing, you do it, and then you go to the next one and the next one, the next one. There's four of them. And then eventually you will fight the final boss. There's two other bosses that I ran into too. And yeah, the final boss is just this massive sponge and he's going to punish you. And I saw people say, you know, you should probably get your guys love to level 60 or 70. All eight of them. Oh, jeez. Eight of them. And it's what like, level are you? Um, I actually had some really high level characters, but I had a few weak characters. So not all of them were at level 60, but I did have some guys that were in the 70s and the 60s. I had a good batch. But I am pretty sure the final boss, once you beat the final boss, you have to beat a second phase of the final boss using your other four characters. Oh, um, but I couldn't even beat the final boss with these four characters. And where the game really breaks down at that point is grinding is harder in this new chapter. You're limited. And you also, if you want more items, you can get some items here, but you have no access to the original world. You'd have to go back to your original save file and then do this again. Ugh. And I'm just like, look, I am not going to grind for 20 hours um, and grind these characters I don't even like just so they can beat the character. It was like, I have no interest in it. So <laughs> that's where I put the game down. I said, that's it. I'm up to the final boss battle. I did the same thing in Octopath 1. I never beat the the true final boss in the first game either. I feel like, I don't know why they do that. And they just make it this, I, I know like, people were like level 90 and had trouble with the final boss in the first game. And I'm just like, I just don't have interest in this. I wish they didn't make the final boss so important, but like such a difficulty curve ahead. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Give me some. So I never got credits in the game or anything like that, but I did every chapter and I've just, I've just wrapped it up. It's, it's fine. It was a good game. I, I think you, in going into this game, you have to look at it more of like an open world where you're exploring, find villages, rob the people blind like that sort of thing try to find chests and find items and and you know change your party out and grind everybody up and all that jazz um yeah so it's a good game i just you know whatever i couldn't i couldn't roll the credits on it but uh Mm -hmm. after 80 hours i'm i'm satisfied i'll just leave it there that's Hmm. that's it good i'm done so yeah i'm I'm glad i feel like i played that game for like a month and a half or two months or something it just forever i'm yeah Glad I'd to be like moving on. Playing it forever. Guess what I'm moving on to, by the way. I just started today. Oh boy. Bayonetta Origins. Oh. I've been wanting to play that game. Look at and you. Uh, finally started. It's very cute. What is it called? Uh, Cereza and the Lost Demon. It's like the story, like the fairy tale looking one with the watercolors. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 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 started I off that. well. I'm I'm just made it up to chapter one. I mean, I literally just chapter one. But um, yeah, no, I'm excited to play through this one. Good. Nice. Um, I played one other game that just came out, Disney's Illusion Island. Uh, so this was the the plan. The vision is to play this as a family of four. Um, and that's it. That's what we were going to do. I'm, I was going to be Mitchie. My wife was going to be Minnie. My son was going to be Donald. And my daughter was going to be Doofy. And um, so we did it. I, I don't know about you. I like this new era of of mickey cartoons right i i think it was a bold change it was different it's slappy it's it's i enjoy it i enjoy mm-hmm. it so going into it i was excited for it um let's start out with the story the story's fun um i will say the writing in this game is like on point like love it i'll, I'll give an example and again it's it's, it's it's a joke i don't think it's that spoily so um they get to this guy and the you know they're doing an upgrade for an item and he's like, oh, you can just you can just have it. It's it's free. And Donald says, he goes, where's the butt? And Goofy goes, oh, it's at the top of your legs. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's just like witty little fun like comedy. It's well written. It's 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 clever. It's unique. It's cool. The gameplay, the the maybe this is just me. Maybe I didn't know. I've only played it for an hour and a half or two hours. So I'll take that for a grain of salt. It could possibly change, but there's no, there's no combat. And maybe, maybe I, maybe people knew this. I didn't know that there's zero combat. It's, it's a straight platformer, 
which I'm not going to lie, can be a little difficult for kids. Like there's some tricky jumps you got to pull off. Um, and then it reminded me of Ori in the sense where like I've gotten a couple upgrades, but all of the upgrades I've gotten were like platform based, you know, like, like and these aren't even the ones, but for example, like a double jump, a wall jump, things like that. Like they're just going to help you progress to a new area on the map. Um, which is again, kind of like Ori. The map actually had a very Ori feel. And I know that's just a Metroidvania type, um, style, right. but it, it did have that Ori feel with like, you did a wall jump. So now you can access that area. Like it was just, that's how it felt, which I love Ori. And, and that's fine for the game. It's just not what I expected. And at first my kids truly did challenge a little bit. Um, uh, being that it's a Disney Mickey game, I will say the customization for the characters has been awesome. So my two kids could go into the settings. Um, you do it. Each controller has to do it for their character and could change it. So like me and my wife play with three, three hearts. That's standard. They could, they pitch like a stone crystal heart. They can't die. They just physically cannot die. Right. Um, it has the, the Mario concept of if you go off the screen where you bubble back and catch up to the other players, has that same concept, which is great. There's some fun little things where you can get like a fourth bonus heart if you hug another character. You know, you hit like X or Y and <laughs> you go up to another character and they give you little hugs and it's, it's funny. So th there's, there's cool little cute stuff like that. Maybe I'm just, I didn't know, I didn't expect, or maybe I'm not progressed far enough to understand that there's no combat. There's, there's a couple enemies, but you just, you got to dodge them. You can't, you can't kill them. There's no way to kill them. Um, Murderer. So that part of it's a little disappointed for me, uh, hmm. but my kids seem to ask about it. Like they want to play it in. So it's, it's fine. I, I think it's fine. I mean, I knew what going into it, it was going to be a Metroidvania. I just wasn't really sure. I thought you'd still be able to fight guys and they, do a little bit more. They never it. did give a lot of details about it. In fact, I didn't know it was a no. Metroidvania until like not even a week ago. Yeah, I guess I didn't. I heard that as well. And I mean, it's not going to change my mind. I just thought it was going to be like a fun four player co-op platformer, but like side scrolling type yeah. game, though. It may be smaller levels, you know, um, like it could be a little bit of a turn off. I think it was just young kids trying to play this game. Right, right. If they didn't have the the help of an adult or or an older kid, um, it could be a little complicated. I mean, maybe once at the hand of it, they're fine. But overall, I, I think it's early for me to make a final decision. I mean, we're gonna obviously play it to the end, but it's fun. It's fun. It's just not what I expected. Okay, so that's, that's Disney's Mickey's Illusion Island. Illusion. <laughs> Disney's Illusion Island. <laughs> um. My last game is Diablo four. I started playing that. Oh, so I jealous. think I don't think I had started this game by our last show. I uh, I honestly wasn't going to play this game. I think I was going to skip it entirely. And I finished Final Fantasy seven remake two days before the first season was to begin for Diablo four. And I was like, well, that's a sign. So I was like, I'll, I'll play some Diablo four. And um, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, I I want to I feel like. I'll talk about it more on the next show. I don't think I'll be done with it by the next show, but um, I will say this. It is it's more open world. You can kind of go everywhere right from the beginning. If you want to, there's this huge map and you just unlock it as you go through the map. It unlocks the, the visual of it on the map screen. Okay. Side quests like crazy, which I don't remember uh, Diablo three really having that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, uh, yeah, like the side quests. Uh, then there's main quests. You could even do main quests from Act Two before you finish Act One. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, I played some multiplayer with my friend, and what's cool about it is when you go into the dungeons, his final boss might be because he's ahead of me, might be like level fifty, and my final boss is like level thirty. Oh, so how does that work? So I think it's I think it's just the effect that he has on the monster is as if the monster is a level fifty. And when I hit the monster, it's as if it's a level 30. I don't so know you, how they do it. So it, it like works out. So you might actually both hit for, for 400 damage, even though it doesn't look that way. Like. Yeah, I don't I don't know. But huh, it's clever. so much better of a system because we can play together. And even though he's way ahead of me, he's grinding. I'm grinding. It's not like if, if the monster was weaker, he's not getting any experience from it. Or if the monster like you've seen it where like the monster is really powerful and I do nothing because I'm too weak. And then I get tons of experience because he beat him. So it just makes it more fair and interesting and everybody can play no matter what their level. 
the huh. only problem was he's he is like way ahead of me because I was still playing Octopath. And so like he comes back to play, you know, when we played online, you know, he's doing like some act two stuff with me, but he can't do the side quests with me. The side quests are local instances um, because they're so tied to the world. So okay. he there was like a quest, a side quest he hadn't done and I couldn't do it with him. So but whatever, that's fine. But like the, the main quest, the dungeons and stuff, he can run the dungeons with me, all sorts of things like that. Um, it's great. My, I love my character. There's more customization options for the character you built. I have this just hot necromancer that I'm using right now. And, um, yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. I think I'm like level 36 in season one. I got up to act three and uh, it's a great game to just sit down for an hour in the air conditioning, uh, just knock off some side quests, upgrade some armor, get some legendary stuff. And, um, yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of fun. I've even actually considered buying the season pass, what does that get you? I never do. I'm trying to figure out if you finish the season pass, if that gets you the next season pass, like some games do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's one you have to buy every season. I, oh, I think sucks. you have to buy it every season. But yeah, as you progress through a season, you unlock cosmetics. It's just cosmetics. You unlock them. So you just get more or faster. Right. They do give you every like fifth cosmetic. You can earn it without the battle pass. So you get it. So that's cool. If I bought the battle pass, I'd get all the ones in between. So I think it's a lot like Fortnite. Gotcha. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do that, though. I might be like, you know what? No, no. Yeah. But I, I do want to come back to this game every season for at least a little while, at least until I play all the major characters. Maybe after five seasons, I'm done. But um, I'm really enjoying it. I'll talk about it more in the next show. I'll probably have it finished a month from now. Um, but I'm I'm really loving it. It's 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 great. <laughs> It's time to find out what do you think. With Drew, he's probably thinking about murdering some snakes, but let's ask anyway, right? All right, Drew, it's Judgment Day. Our monthly mayhem was Service Mayhem. Pick a game off any of the four major gaming services. Pick a game or a genre that you wouldn't have normally played. Give mm-hmm. it a shot. You don't have to pay for it. So just play it. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you'll maybe you'll have some fun with it. Just to be clear, Luna is not free. Well, the services aren't free, but you can play the games on the service for free. Sure. Hey, so if you're gonna play. A, new you're games. gonna play some shit game like I did. Well, I won't. I, it, okay, let's start off with our reviews, Drew. Um, we are not eligible, um, yeah. but let's discuss. I want to go through everybody's review, and then we'll pick our winner here. And I'm gonna start with me. I'm okay. not eligible. Okay. I played Bug Snacks on the PS Plus service. You did. I watched and you stream a little bit of it, actually. I did. This is one of my test streams. I streamed it. I ran into trouble. Um, and this was the review that I gave. I chose this one because I made fun of it during the 2020 PlayStation Showcase. And despite two services making it free to play at one point or another, I still had no interest in it. I didn't even know what genre it was. There are not many bugs as food games. It's fair. It turns out it's a first person game where you have to catch food bugs called bug snacks and feed them to these dudes who, for whatever reason, can't do it for themselves. You have a little activity (laughs) wheel, a la Horizon, and you choose other tools to get the job done. So you can just catch uh, a bug snacks by setting setting a trap and hiding. Others, you have to sling ketchup or mustard to lead them into the trap. Each one is a little bit different. I played about an hour and found the game played smooth and was overall very unique in its mechanics. I didn't love the controls. They felt inconsistent from other modern games, so I would jump a lot when I meant to talk to a character. I also found even the tutorial a bit tricky as I got stuck for a long while figuring out how to catch the hamburger dudes, but I think I liked it. It's an interesting and refreshing game. I won't continue it, though, because it's first person, and by the end, I was feeling a little buzzed. I'm glad I played it. I finally have a better handle of what the game is, and I'll even carry a couple memories away with it, but I'm done. Are you glad... Are you truly glad that you played that game? I am because I feel like I have a handle on what that game is now. Okay. But I didn't know it was first person. I don't know why I didn't know that. And I got stuck for like 20 minutes trying to figure out how to catch these hamburger dudes. They wouldn't tell me how to catch them, but you had to use ketchup to attract them. And so you would use the ketchup to get the hamburger dudes to hit other enemies or whatever. But apparently in order to catch this guy, you had to use ketchup and get both of them to jump at it together. 
and they would hit each other and then you can so capture sounds, one. Sounds I terrible. could not figure that out. I tried sounds everything. Stupid. Yeah. So I'm sitting there on my stream going, I don't know what to do. Um, you know, but no, you know, it was fine. It was clever and it wasn't I it was something I probably should have figured out. But I it was the tutorial section. It was a little weird they didn't really help me a little tutorial. bit. Tutorial. Tutorialize you. I know. Give me a little help, especially when you see I'm having trouble. So I don't know. But you know what game sounds better than that? Army of Ruin, John. That's what <laughs> Army of Ruin. All right, Drew, you uh, why don't you mm. why don't you walk us through yours? And uh, what did you play? I don't, I don't remember. What did I wrote? Do you want scroll, me to find it? And scroll read down. It? Scroll down in the document. Listen. Oh, you <laughs> have them in the document. I was trying to do a discord. Okay, I wrote. Well, I think I mentioned this. I, I mentioned it on an episode, but I'll mention it again. Uh, I'll read word for word because it's short. For monthly mayhem, I played Freshly Frosted, backed by our very own Bob Cruz and Hambone, um, on Luna. This was one of the first games I played on Luna, John. Uh, in this game, you help make donuts by laying out conveyor belts to properly add frosting, sprinkles, and all the other good stuff in the correct order. This game sucked. I did not finish it and probably will not go back. I, however, did like the music. Um, man, this is this is a straight up puzzler. It to me honestly felt like a mobile game. Like it just a lot of games are like that now. They they want to be on mobile and yeah. they have that mobile feel on the console. Yeah, I mean, God bless Hambone and Cruz. I, I, it wasn't that relaxing. I, I don't see how like you could be motivated to continue this game. Like, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It looks interesting, but it's not. Yeah, it's, I think it, it, you're literally just laying out a, 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 a treadmill. It's like um. With donuts. You know, like when you play like a SimCity game and you like push A and you like you drag a road. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I felt like I was doing. Building mm -hmm. a treadmill, like in a simulation game from one start point to the next start point. <laughs> that's it. That's all you do. Unless it's like one of those games, like a movie that just takes a complete 180 twist, like halfway through. Right. I don't think this is that type of game where like all of a sudden now, like you're There's fighting zombies sprinkles. off your donuts. Like, I, probably I don't know. not. Probably not. It's probably yeah. going to continue down um, lane conveyor belts. Not for me. Let's move on. Uh, I got a question for you. You played this game and you played one other game on Luna. Have you played Luna since then? Uh, I have not. Is it already dead? <laughs> It's not dead. It's waiting. It's like it's in hibernation for Avatar. Are you paying for it or you're just doing the Amazon Prime? I don't want free month. Remember? OK, well, no, I don't remember. It's a very forgettable system, but like I had one for month. Well, August 1st. So every first of every month, I believe they rotate the, the three or four free games. So I'm going to see right. what comes up. But you are paying for that in addition to your prime. No, no, that's free. You that's get free. the okay. free fo if you have Amazon Prime, which I don't count that as a game and service because I get a you lot of other it. stuff for that. But you said um, the first month was free. That was um, the plus version, which you'd get a okay. ton of other games, uh, which would have included freshly frosted in this okay, case. I but you're not going to continue that one? Not right now. I mean, if I, I could, you could join at any time. So like, if I want to just go on Amazon, you know, you do on the on the on the app. OK. Because so. when I bought my PlayStation, I, I played it. I didn't I didn't buy I bought a controller, John. I didn't buy <laughs> I didn't buy a, a, a console. <laughs> All right, a controller that was on. on I'm going to be on you about playing some Luna. All right, we got uh, uh, Jesse. If you listen to uh, the episode two, two or three, Nintendo Dads ago, um, he didn't do a write up. He's not eligible anyway. He said, but um, he talked about it. He played Forza Five Horizon. Good for him uh, on Game Pass. He actually played like I think he said like five hours, maybe That's even more than that. I played yeah. about five minutes of Freshly Frosted. Five minutes. Wow. No, I beat the first world. I beat 12 levels. I think it was more than five minutes. Okay. Um, but Jesse said not his jam. Car racing games are not his jam, but that was his game that he gave a try. But he played it for hours. I was pretty impressed by uh, mm. pretty impressed by that. Um, we have Hoots, who also did play Forza 5, but he did a couple of games. And him. I picked out his other review just to be a little different. And I thought it was a little funnier, too. He said, this is Hoots. I played Unpacking. Oh, you played this game. I've played this game, too. Yes. yes. 
Everybody. I've always looked at cozy games like Animal Crossing and asked, what's the point? So I figured I'd give the short this short game a chance. I hated this game. Well done, Hoots. I was shocked at how accurately the game captured the feeling of unpacking <laughs> in real life. The only thing I hate more than unpacking in real life is packing, because I know I'm just going to have to unpack it later. <laughs> and in this game, you don't even get the satisfaction of using all the stuff you unpack, pulling any joy at all out of the unpacking process. But the environmental storytelling, you say, a girl goes to college, gets a job, meets a douche, breaks up, moves back home, finds someone else and starts a family. Riveting. <laughs> the game is incredibly functional and looks fine. So I struggle to give it anything lower than a five out of ten. But know that it is a five devoid of any enjoyment whatsoever. That's I a, mean, oof, it's a great review. Cruel. I respect him giving him a five. I don't remember honest. what I gave it. I did it. I did a 30 second review of it. Cool. Um, I agree with him. There is that story going on in the game, but it, it the gameplay doesn't really support it enough. Yeah, it's I, I yeah, it's a clever little story being told, but I'm still just doing something boring and seeing that story. I didn't love it either, but there are people that really liked it and whatever. But it, it really drags um, the middle and late parts of the game. Um, but it is very unique and interesting, at least given that. But good for you, Hoots, for giving that one a try. Uh, and the last one we got is from Darth Platypus. He writes, I played Super Soccer. It is a Super Nintendo game on NSO. I don't usually play sports games. Being an N being a Super Nintendo game, it doesn't have cutting edge graphics. It's yeah, I disagree with you. I think I played this seems game. To, it seems to be on par with other graphics on the system, though at times that what did make it a bit difficult to tell if my character actually had the white ball with my team's white jerseys. At the start of the game, you are given the choice between exhibition and tournament, so you can just play a one-off or try to become the world champion. In exhibition, you can do you versus a computer, you against another player, or you and a buddy versus a computer. That's a cool mode. So if you are looking to play with someone else, there are some choices. Tournaments can be solo player or two players taking on the other computer-controlled teams. At the start of any game, you can pick what formation you'd like to use, and then gives you the team roster so you can move people around as you see fit. Once the game begins, you have a single vantage point that tracks up and down the field with the action. It makes goal kicks and the like great in the first half, as you can see where your team is, but not so wonderful in the second half, as you can no longer see them. In playing the game with single player, if your team has the ball, then that is the player you control. If you don't have the ball, well, I'm not always sure. At times, there is a player on your team with an arrow over them, but that guy seems to never be the guy that you are controlling. <laughs> the music is cheerful, 16-bit Nintendo tunes, and there are some sound effects. There are some sound effects. I can see where as a kid with a buddy after school, this would have been fun to try to work your way through the tournament and beat everyone. But at this point, it is not a game for me. That is it. That is it, Drew. Nobody liked the game that they chose. <laughs> Good. That's the point um, of this. I think I hated my game the least of everybody. I mean, I actually said I think it's a good game, but it's not for me. Um, but everyone else was like, I don't oh, like this. The, the, the 15 minutes I watched you stream looked like the game sucked. <laughs> so... You know, throwing ketchup at bugs is it's got a, it's got a charm. It also makes you very hungry. All right. So we have two eligible people. We have Hoots and his unpacking review, and we have Darth Platypus and his super soccer review. Can I say a few things first? Mm -hmm. What you know, what a letdown, right? You listeners let me down like disappointment, uh -oh. like let down. What an easy mayhem. You didn't even have to fucking beat the game. <laughs> you could have played 30 seconds of any game, any game, and you would have had like a 50% chance of winning a free $10 eShop card. All of our eligible people are going to win today. All of them. But They're all going to win. These people are guaranteed winning. They played a shitty game from Super Nintendo probably in the early 1990s, and he's just won money. He just paid for NSO. Mm -hmm. I'm hurt. I'm distraught. Mm -hmm. I'm angry. Yeah. I'm sad. You guys made everything. Drew sad. I hope you're proud of yourselves. Hope you're proud of yourselves. I'm just, I'm just you know, I played Freshly Frosted, damn it. For what? <laughs> for nothing. For five minutes is what you did. I beat World One, baby. <laughs> All right, my rant's over. I love you guys as always, but play monthly mayhem. I know this might not have been the most. It was easy. It was just. It was just 
easy. This was the easiest one you could have played ever. But that being said, John, we have some judging to do. Um, one of you two are going to win 15, and the other one's going to win 10 by default. But don't look at it as default. Just look at it as your second best. <laughs> All right. Well, I get it. So it's, this is a battle between Hoots and Darth Platypus. We're going to pick a winner. That winner gets 15. The other person's going to get 10. It's just mm-hmm. like we don't even have to do a lot of balls. We don't even need to deal with the balls today, Drew. I agree. No balls. question today. is. So let's talk it out. Unpacking. What a fun, witty review. Um, I liked how we kind of tied it back to uh, some some nice little like riveting and hated this game. And and he describes the you story. Can feel it. He, he gives it a natural rating. He accepts that the game sucked wasn't for him, but it was functional. So he brought that into play as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and given an actual solid number, short, concise to the point, like that a lot. Um, platypus. Got to respect anybody 30 years play years later going back and playing an old school sports game. Because let's be honest, most of them, besides hockey games, kind of suck. Right. It's just a fact, especially all the old soccer games. Remember, like the beach soccer games. Mm. It's just slow motion. Tech so, Mobile. Tech Mobile was pretty good. Yeah. So just Tech Mobile and, and, and hockey, whatever reason. I mean, baseball wasn't that great, let's be honest. The ooh, you know what I'm talking about. Is there a is there a hail in your area? Or was that no, that was you? Okay. That was the pop fly. You tell when it was getting lower, that's it was coming closer to the ground. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so so Dark Platypus, Post, respect you playing it. You get into the little bit of the graphics and the music. You say what kind of sucked about the game, right? You talked about the white ball and the white uniforms was a little misleading. You wrote why you think that it would have been maybe fun with, you know, your buddy after, you know, elementary school type thing. Threw that part in there. Um, and you talked about kind of just how the game was tough and storing goals was tough. Um, and then it wasn't for you either. You did not give it a rating, but I'm assuming it would have been very low. Um, so, John, where what do you what do you think here? What's your feedback? Um, I I I have to I I have to lean towards Hoots here. Mm. Uh, I found the review funny, and I I really, as someone who has played this game, I really I think I I love his honesty about this game. This is one of those games that people kind of like give a glowing review, but like I don't know when you play it, you're just like this is Ugh. not. You know, we don't have to give a glowing review to every game that an independent developer made or something like that. And I really think he captured what makes this game is just a little boring. Hmm. It's the same thing over and over again. You finish a day and the next day you do it all over again. It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, So I really like that. I like Darth Platypus's write up on Super Soccer. Makes me a little interested to actually check it out. Don't don't kid yourself. I just I want to see what he wrote and I want to see I want to see it in real life. Yeah, go play one match then. Um, but um, I also enjoy this. I also enjoyed this review. I feel like he gave uh, a little bit more detail about the game. I think True. it was a more fleshed out review. Uh, but honestly, I, I got to say, if I have to pick one of the two reviews, I'm I'm leaning hoots. Yeah, you know, I I I, I'm, I I agree. I think I think Platypus did get into more detail, right? Which is which is good in reviews because it tells you more about the into the actual game itself. But I agree. Uh, the wittiness, and it, I laughed a couple times reading Hoots, and at the same time, I feel like I understood the frustration and the point of the game. So um, I agree. I think I think we have a winner. We got a winner. We got a Congratulations winner. Congratulations to Hoots. You win $15 of eShop money. And let's run the lotto. And Darth Platypus, you win the $10 lotto. Look at that. Look at How easy that. This game is. <laughs> so, All right, that was fun. I, I actually did enjoy this mayhem. I I, I got to t- I got to stream and all that. Uh, maybe we'll do it again. Um, but you know, I, I I was surprised. I was surprised we didn't get as much participation this time around. Mm, agreed. Right. You guys, I hope you all you all made Drew mad. I hope you're all proud of yourselves. Sad. I'm sad. It's proud Disapp- of yourselves. I'm not mad. I'm I'm disappointed. All right, Drew. Kick us off with a question. Yes, some questions. So, John, scrolling through the dark web the other day, I came across some AI. Where you've been talking to AI now for a couple of months now. You know, you're using it. You're replacing our host. You're doing all these things with it. Um, 
when does AI officially take over the world, right? There's a lot of movies and shows we're out there. I mean, I feel like we're 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 muddy in the water here. We're entering an atmosphere we don't want to enter. We're we're in dangerous territory. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that being said, is it okay to be attracted to AI? Uh, AI. I I I posted a, a Twitter link here. I don't know if you saw this or if you. I, oh yeah, no, I I went through it. It's um this this hot chick. You know, AI created the perfect female uh her bio is a 24 year old virtual girl from helsinki finland i was made by ai check my other social media accounts in the link below it's just fucking creepy like good morning making memories by my crystal clear waters of bora bora and this picture of this girl that looks very real in bikinis and i mean her she's at work it's like fuck (laughs) <laughs> isn't this creepy right so basically she is not real it's just ai generated images mm. and uh yeah she's got a she's got a feed and you know on x and uh yeah i don't know i she might not be the only one but um yeah like you know perfect pictures and whatever she just doesn't really exist isn't is, that it, weird? is it okay so your question really is is it okay to be like attracted, attracted to it yeah it is weird. She's almost too perfect, you know? I know. It's just like, it's it's like too perfect, and it's like, it's not a real person, and whatever. It's like, how what can she you be like, wow, she really stays in shape? And it's like, well, she doesn't exist. It's like, <laughs> so what can you do? And and honestly, I've never been, like, too much into, like, the perfect girls. You know what I mean? Like, that sort of thing. I actually like the quirky, uh, the unique, um, you know, that sort of thing. Like, I don't know if... I, like if you watch Oppenheimer, uh, Florence Pugh is in it. I'm not very familiar with her, but she has some nude scenes and she's a very uniquely shaped lady. And it's refreshing. Like, you know what I mean? It's like she doesn't look like other actresses. And sure. that's awesome. You know, Anna Kendrick, right? She's kind of kind of goofy goofy, or whatever. And that's like that quirkiness is is what does it. So, um, yeah, Gotta this girl it. is too perfect, maybe. Agreed. All right, just for to brighten it up. But it's okay to be attracted to AI, too. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. <laughs> um, do you like Duncan? I feel like, Duncan, you guys went into... Yeah. Now, you do, Drew is mad. Uh, now it's my turn to get mad. You I motherfuckers. I was mad, too. I'm on you your You motherfuckers side. come into our fucking channel, <laughs> and you take a shit on Duncan Donuts in front of me? In front of New Englanders? Come in front on. of New Yorkers? You, you, Are you kidding me? I get my fucking Duncan. I mean, like, you can tell me. they. I was told that Duncan is no longer made. And back in the 80s, they used to make them in the, in the shops. But I think I think because there's a lot of Duncans, they probably had a, a bunch of executives get together and really? say, we can't rent out these big stores. We need little stores. Yeah. And so in order to save space, I guess they make the dough in uh factories and then they ship the dough but they actually cook the donuts in the store Mm. but they're prepared in a factory yes not unlike a fast food restaurant where they 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 give you the burgers but then they actually cook the burger like in mcdonald's they actually cook the burgers in the mcdonald's it's just that they are frozen patties when they come to mcdonald's sure so but you shit all over duncan look duncan is fucking amazing Munchkins okay. are the greatest gift Had on some the today. planet. Uh, yeah. Um, what what size box did you get? Are you, were you 25 well, family or a 50? I'm a 25 family. I mean. Um, Got to do better than that, Drew. Well, my kids 25, are small, 25 to me is like, a, is like I put them all in my hand at one time and eat them all. I know. What's your favorite munchkin? Um, I, I actually, I mean, I need them all. I, I do not like, the, I do not like the powdered. I don't like the powdered. I never Powder get the powdered. Probably the straight up worst. I it agree is the, with that. It is the worst. I love the glazed cause it's like soft and delicious, but they I, I so usually soft. mix it with glazed chocolate. Um, maybe I'll throw some blueberry sometimes in there and yeah. then the jelly, like, um, the jelly, the jelly is probably my favorite. My favorite too. Yeah. The jelly's just so good, but you need the variety, right? You wouldn't get, I mean, I could get a pack of just the jellies. But, but I wouldn't right. want I like to. having the moist chocolates. And like you said, mm-hmm. the, the moist and dense and then the nice glaze of fluffy. Yeah. 
<sighs> love it. I like the pumpkin ones this time of the year soon. The pumpkin muffin munch. I think we tried that last year. Yeah, I, I might try it again. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. All you haters, Dunkin' is. It's a meaty donut. I like it. It's a meaty donut. I get the apple fritters. That's my favorite. My my wife is just loves the jelly. Um, yeah, don't don't do that again. OK, don't don't, don't, do, don't do that again. Slap on the rest. You people. Duncan, man, go watch the Duncan Donuts SNL sketch with Casey Affleck. It is a top 10 all time <laughs> SNL sketch. It is freaking hilarious. And if you show it to anybody from Boston, they'll go, oh, yeah, that is not even parody. That is real. That is exactly yeah. what happens. That's great. Um, OK, good. I'm glad we can agree on that. Agreed. <laughs> I got uh, I got another question for you. Sure. Uh, I've been playing Diablo this week and I've been thinking because that's what I do. I come up with stupid things in my head. Sure. Are games like Diablo bad for the gaming industry? And let me explain. OK. I bought Diablo for seventy dollars. OK, I didn't I didn't wait for a sale this time. I paid seventy dollars for it. OK, that's fine. This game is going to have 30 seasons. Hmm. Um, this is going to be a game that probably gets played over eight years. And it. I, it may not be for me, but there are going to be lots of players who play this game every season for 100 hours over and over and over again at the expense of playing and buying other games. Mm. Does a game like Diablo, even if people pay money to Diablo, like even if you're paying money to Blizzard for uh, the season passes and all that stuff. Does a game like Diablo suck up too much oxygen that there is a finite number of hours that the gaming community will be able to play? And Diablo is just sucking up too many of those hours over so many years. Is this bad for the industry or it, it no? is right? It is. I mean, I, I don't know if I mean, Diablo is an example, right? I think Fortnite and these other types of shooter games, mm -hmm. and Call of Duties and all. I think they're probably even worse than Diablo. But um, I agree. Yeah, they 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 take away. Right. I mean, you know, MMOs used to do that a lot, too. I mean, you don't really get MMOs as much on consoles. And, and I'm, I'm kind of out of the uh, the world of, of PC gaming. Right. And but now that these massive games can make their way onto consoles at home, it's. I think it does hurt. Right. I think it absolutely takes purchases away. Right. I mean, me and you in general always talk about, you know, what's the next game we're going to play? And we have this in our head, this, this schedule of what we're playing the next month or two. Right. Right. And you know, as you wrap up a game, what the next game is going to be that you start. I know in my head that I'm going to be starting uh, the Zelda season soon. Right. Like as soon as like I say that like, I'm done with army of ruins and, and I need like a solo game again, like that's my next startup game. Right. So if I was, for example, let's say Diablo 4 was on the Switch and I was playing that. Would I be even thinking about playing in my next game? Or would I be like, no, I'm going to keep playing Diablo until I'm bored. Right? And then, mm -hmm. and then never mind the guys that play online all the time. They're going to play this game forever. So they have buddies to play with. And, and that's the fun of it. That's a different whole other avenue to go down. So, And then even if you get bored, November comes along, right? And then it's like, okay, season two. And then you're going to dump another 150 hours into it. It's yeah. just going to constantly bring there. You mentioned Fortnite. I think Fortnite is one. It's like it's a free to play game. And there are people who have played thousands of hours on it and not given money away. Now, it's easy to say, yeah. well, they, cho they chose to play that game. That's what they picked. But there are these games that the, the key point I'm trying to make here is the, these games are all about progression and playing over and mm -hmm. over and over. Level up, level up, get Paragon levels, get these seasonal items, get this, get that. And yeah. you would just get invested for so long. Whereas a game like, like, let's say Final Fantasy VII Remake, I played 30 hours, I finished it, and I'm done. And I move on and I go buy something yeah. else or I go play something else. Diablo is going to grab people and keep them from buying some other games. I, Look, absolutely if, you, will. if you love Diablo, um, you know, and I chose to play Diablo, and I don't know what I'll do, but I chose to play Diablo, then fine. This is not about us or whatever. I'm talking about from an industry point of view, you wonder if they go around and say, hey, cut it out with a thousand hour games, man. You're making us look bad. Right. You're 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 taking sales away like John was going to go play Spider-Man in October, but he's going to be stuck playing season two in Diablo. And now I'm not making a sale. So um, I just wonder from yeah. an industry point of view. Do they hate this? 
And they they have to. It's remember, a different concept. Though. Like, like, look how many games now are trying to tie in these never-ending games, right? And and it it really depends on the game and like the fun of it, right? I mean, I find it difficult, and I'll use Fortnite as an example where it's not very like appealing to me. Like you're playing the same exact game pretty much. And you're unlocking skins. You work this whole season to get a skin, right? You're like, I want the Optimus Prime skin, and I'm going to wear it for two weeks. And then the next season's going to come out. Yeah. I wanted the Miles Morales skin. I don't care about Optimus Prime anymore. It just is mind blowing to me. But you're playing the same repetitive game over and over and you're over. describing disney speedstorm which is why i'm laughing but <laughs> um, I, I it's not made. though because at least i think <laughs> in disney speedstorm right i'm going out there and maybe i am maybe i am maybe you're right but at least i'm trying to unlock actual characters get I, to I don't think it's skin right it, it get to um, <laughs> and there's new tracks coming out and, and maybe and new objectives and maybe they, they just say the same thing about fortnite oh we they update the maps every new chapter yeah. or whatever they call it or season and, and stuff but um Look at look at Fortnite though. Remember, Marty was out. Marty was bored of Fortnite, and then he but, actually got dragged yeah. in to a season because he wanted Optimus Prime. Just he just wanted the Optimus Prime skin, and he mm. has to play through a hundred levels. Like I don't know how long that takes, but I know it takes dozens of hours it's just to get that long. one skin. And then if he doesn't play the game again, what's the point of having the skin, right? Like of, you know, of so course, right? He so got dragged at, right so, back I'm, in. I mean, I, maybe I'm just as bad. I spent forty five hours in Disney Speedstorm so far um to get two seasons so i i don't if i'm spending 20 hours a season I, maybe that is a lot yeah but again like you point at your point of view is how long will i sustain that for i'm gonna be honest i don't know if lilo and stitch is gonna keep me from like wanting to complete a battle pass like sure i'll get stitch and stuff but like after that they're the to but i don't know if i need the other ones <laughs> girl stitch <laughs> Girl Stitch or Lilo, I could probably go with a hard pass on them, and I'd be I'd be fine. We should talk about it in another show, but I think I Stitch, Stitch is the worst character in Disney history. I cannot stand Stitch. Wow. Yeah, Stitch it's is a lot of popularity. He's fucking obnoxious. Yeah, no, he's obnoxious. Got rid of his ride. All right, Drew. It is mm. halfway through July. <laughs> halfway through twenty twenty three. It is. Uh, we need to talk about who the hottest new characters in gaming have been this year. Mm. We need to talk about this. This is this is what we are here is for. It? Nintendo dads aren't going to talk about the hottest characters in gaming in 2023. They it's our are. job, our duty, I if you I will. prepared for this. Our duty. <laughs> Dude, I'm looking at my Switch now to see what games duty. I played. Um, I I've got a few I can throw out there. And uh, the first one I want to throw out there is, and it, this isn't a game from this year, but I just played it. No joke, man. Tifa is no joke. When we did our booty bracket, Tifa mm -hmm. was in there, and I actually thought she was going to win. Tifa, but Final I've Fantasy seen pictures VII. of Tifa Lockhart in the Final Fantasy VII remake. Don't do her justice. Like, seriously, she mm -hmm. is a smoke Since show on the topic. I might as well just add new to the, you, you know, that. what makes Search. Tifa so hot. And I, I, I figured this out while I was playing yeah, is she has these though. like, she's got like suspenders and the suspenders of like, she has like a gun or whatever that's that she's holding up on her pants, but she's got the suspenders, but her tits are so big that the suspenders go off to the sides of her boobs. Like, that that is what makes her the smoke show the straps don't go across the front of her mm. body because they are overwhelmed by the mountains um i think that's subtle <laughs> that's subtle detail it's what really that's, sells that, i'm not sure it is that subtle it's it's not subtle um but yeah she's a smoke show and there's like a bunch of there's a bunch of women who are after cloud in this game but tifa by far like forget jesse i mean just tifa is it's crazy crazy mm. Um, another one I want to throw out there is Professor Garlic from uh, Hogwarts Legacy. She's one of the professors. She is a uh, poster. Is she the potions? I, uh, herbology. She's herbology. And um, she is super cute. Uh, Professor Garlic spelled with a K at the end. So there's a lick in her name, if that interests you. She looks like she's 12. Professor Garlic? No. Red hair, green hat. Yeah, I don't know about <laughs> you. Oh, no. Hambone knows what's going on. 
yeah, Hambone and I both 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 were big garlic fans. Um, um, what about the chip from Advance Wars? You sound different right now. Did you change your mic or something? I, I don't know. I was so oh, overlapping. Okay, there you go. I'm sorry, there you I was go. too close. To, I was too close looking at the nude pictures of Tifa. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just being honest here. The chick from Advance Wars. What's her name? C- uh, Cammy, Sammy, Sammy, with, with the red Sammy. hair. Yeah. White tank top, like a belly shirt. Yeah, I like Sammy. Yeah. She just seems fun. Seems like a good time. She's like, she likes hanging with boys. That tells you something. (laughs) What are the games? I mean, we had Xenoblade this year, right? I mean, you liked that. Who was your favorite? Yeah, I liked. I uh, I didn't. I wasn't a fan of her. Yeah. I like all the characters in Xenoblade 3 except for the one uh the one dude who was always like in a bad mood. <laughs> oh, the what's his name? He's like the Tyon? Tyon. I'll be honest, I wasn't fond of any of the chits in Xenoblade this year. Really? This, this door around. I don't think it well, you know what? Coming off of Mithra and Pyre, it's like you're not gonna be able to recreate that. Yeah. I, I actually thought I really like Senna. Um, she was my um, avatar for a while on Switch. Um, I thought Noah was the hottest chick until I realized it was a guy. Um, <laughs> That's fucked up. So I think I ranked them Senna and then Mio. Um, I like them all. I just, I, yeah, I like Lands. I like. I thought they were all cool and they're all hot and everything. But I didn't. I didn't really love Tyon. Interesting. So, How about um, you know, Bell and Dreamblade Valley was looking pretty hot. Bell. What came out? Violet and Pearl this year? Was anyone in that one? Uh that was no, that was last year, right? No. No, 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 no. That was this Charlotte. Year. Was it? I can't remember. Look that up. Or was it Christmas time? Maybe you're right. Maybe it was yeah, no, it November. Out... You're right, it was November. November. Yeah. yeah. Time goes fast. Shit. So there's been yeah, there's been no new Pokemon games. There show. are um I have four Street Fighter Six characters listed here. Uh, my main jury. Um and then uh uh Manon. So Manon is this French girl. I remember looking her up once. Yeah, her moves are very like uh like French ballet type uh whatever, and she is awesome. I don't like her haircut very much, but her alternate costume, um, she looks really cool in it. Cammy is clearly like the hottest one um Cammy? she's amazing and if you okay. remember cammy yeah cammy in the original street fighter 2 one of the one of the street fighter 2 uh, follow-ups um she used to have this like green leotard you know and she oh, yeah. does these like spiral moves now. so you can unlock that costume in the game most of the alternate costume for the old characters are their original outfits but it's so funny because she has like this british flag jacket on like a leather jacket and she looks different she has pants on Blue? So just she doesn't look like she the original Cammy, but it's because when you unlock that costume, it's so realistic now. The game, it's just like you just see the ass cheeks and whatever. It doesn't. <laughs> it comes across almost like too realistic. Um, but it's pretty funny because I've I've used Cammy with that outfit on while I was playing with Cedric, and I'm like, oh boy, like <laughs> it's just nice. Um, but yeah, I think Cammy's the hottest. But Lily, so Lily's Lily, really cute in Street Fighter. Renewed after the search. Yeah, Lily is, I think, like related to, is it Tomahawk from Street Fighter lore? Is that Was that the character? Street Fighter 2 Tomahawk? He's like a big Indian guy. Yeah. Tomahawk. Uh, I don't know if it was Tomahawk or something similar to that. No, but it is Tomahawk. Is it? And she is related. Uh, they call him T-Hawk sometimes, too. Um, but she is related in some way or a friend or something like that. But she's from like the same tribe or whatever. And she's got this like kind of native outfit on. But sometimes when she falls on the ground, it flops up and she's just wearing like panties under it. <laughs> got to look real close. I'm here for that. Who is it? Um, and then um, you didn't play deep into Fire Emblem Engage. No, I was going to ask I about that. Two characters here that I think are the hottest. Ivy. And Zephia. Uh, Zephia is a villain. Um, Zephia is just insane, like just insane. It's too bad she's a villain, and you know you don't. There's no romance Ivy. going on. But Ivy looks like a villain. 
Ivy is Ivy actually starts as a villain. Um, but, What's the other uh, one's name? Uh, Zephia, Z E P H I A. She's just ridiculous, like classic Fire Emblem ridiculousness. Um, so she's my she's one of my favorites. She her outfit has like. It's like imagine like a bra and then like two small straps and then underwear. And that's how she walks around. I'm OK with that, too. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Let me like, add nude to that one. Let's go to war like this. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to stop. <laughs> Amy's going to be using this computer and doing some weird <laughs> shit. Oh, my gosh. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, it, it's been a weird first half of the year, to be honest. Um I mean, for, for hot chits and I think for games in general, but um, I think there's a lot. Uh, I, I still got I, my I, top two. I, Do you have any? Because I have I have I still have, I, those aren't even my top two. No, but I guess I just did Google back up here. OK, get Google back up. Uh, my okay. number two. And this is a this is a this is an Xbox one. This is Peppermint from Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi. I love Peppermint from Hi-Fi Rush. She is like a hacker. She's cool. She has a prosthetic leg. Um, oh, I think I saw you posted a picture of her. Yeah, she's kind of like a like a bit punk. She's definitely like a renegade. Um, she's awesome. What an awesome character. I loved her, and uh, she kept me going in Hi-Fi Rush. Um, she's too cool. Okay. Um, but there can only be a number one first half of 2023 okay. hottest character, and it is right. the easiest selection in the history of mankind. It is Pura from Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, I knew the glasses, like that. the goggles, the the hidden genius. What size bra you think she has under there? What do you think she's going on? I don't know, but she is just so <laughs> effortlessly everything. Pura is perfection. I hope the DLC like stars Pura. Maybe like make her playable or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what it is. She's the best. Oh, per up cosplay. That's there is I mean. a lot of cosplay and fanfic Listen, going on. You can buy a per cosplay costume for uh-huh. $70. You did that for Michelle. <laughs> Let me send you the link. <laughs> send me the link. I'll wear it when you guys come over. I'll pick you up at the airport dressed like that. <laughs> so hold on, where is it? Um, amazing though. I can't. I can only. I can only wait to see what's coming in the second half of this year. I'm too yeah, afraid. It's on to look sale. Right at the one seventy. Uh, but you know what? It's like it's not. The, it's it's clearly not the outfit, man. It's the. Well, I mean, it's the best they can do for seventy dollars. Okay. How do you sell it. It is. It's pretty. It's pretty good. Pretty good. But man, it's hard to. It's hard to fill you, it out. If you wore that out anywhere in public on Halloween night. I don't think anybody would know who you are. Oh, I think so. The I, don't glass, know. I think the glasses and the headwear would give it away. Maybe the outfit just looks kind of like more of like a Chinese type. I don't know. Yeah, when I saw it, I didn't go, oh, that's Pura's outfit. But that's the glasses what I'm saying. And the goggles is all you really need. Hmm. That's crazy that they have that already. Good stuff. I mean, how do they have that already? That's crazy. I don't know. All right, we got some questions from the fans. We do, we do. I'll let read one here from uh, good friend Sean Abbott. He says, kids, how the hell do you deal with kids and devices while away? Our five-year-old has been fine. He's understood that iPad time was when we were showing, uh, showering in the evening, but my eldest, fuck me. She's been a pain. Sit up till 3 a.m. on her phone and then sleeping most of the day when... Uh, away when why can't I read away then because she's been uh, getting up some days to be involved she's been moody as hell she's 17 by the way so it sounds like he's saying his 17 year old daughter just stays up way too late on her phone doing whatever um, and then never wants to wake up on vacation mornings when he's trying to get the family <laughs> to do stuff um, but John I mean I'm, I'm in a very different scenario I think probably than you uh, when we go away we don't even bring our iPad uh, the kids do not have access to phones. We really don't play games or go on the phones at all on vacation, period. Um, but again, my kids are seven and nine, so it's a little bit different. Um, I know what's your perspective with having older kids that have their own phones. 
Yeah, um, I it hasn't really been a problem yet, but we're about to go on another vacation, so we'll see. Um, I know I don't think it's been a big issue. I, my oldest is sixteen. Um, uh, Cedric's a boy, and so it might be a little bit different. He's not. I don't think he's always obsessively trying to keep connected with his friends all the time. So not a big issue, but yeah, I mean, when we go on trips and stuff like that, they're not staying. I, I, I cannot imagine Cedric staying up till 3 a.m. on his phone. I would definitely take the phone away, mm. um, throw it on the charger and say, don't touch it or something like that. I, you know, especially because the next day, you know, you're, you're, you're tired and whatever. You can't, you can't be out of sync on your sleep schedule when you're on vacation. So I, I don't know. Um, but having a 17 year old girl is a lot different than having a 17 year old boy. I will that's say that. True. I don't know. Especially nowadays. I think you got to just take it away. I got you got to take it away. And I know it might be tough and, and whatever, but like when I, I you're on vacation, of, yeah, a contract. Or, or, or maybe Sean, maybe it's one of those things that if you're staying at a hotel and stuff, right, you know, have your phone, whatever during the day. But when it's, we're all getting ready in the room and we're trying to relax in for the night and it's like 10 o'clock. We're going to go to bed soon. Yep. Like leave the phone like on the table charger. Like don't bring it to bed with you or in the bedroom. Like right leave across it in the, the room. Yeah. Leave it in a central room. And it's not like you, you can't have, but like don't bring it to bed. That that would be my advice. Like don't let yep. them physically bring the phone in bed with them. Um, Just that that's probably my take. It's tough to say we're on vacation. You're not having your phone period. I I, I think that probably is the opposite way to handle it, but. Yeah, I think you I mean, you're on vacation. You want to stay connected with friends. You can't really do yeah. that. But I think before the trip too, you have to set that expectation before you go. Just say, listen, you're not going to do that again. Um, you can have the phone in the room or whatever. But at a certain time, that's it. You know, just yep. yeah, we got things to do. You know, we can't leave mm-hmm. you around. Uh, Sean followed up with another question that said, what did you guys like to do for vacation? Um, or on vacation rather he says i'm the type of guy that can't sit still i'd rather be out exploring around usually hire a quad bike or go off but this year haven't done that but we have explored the island uh we've gone to um i i i agree as far as sitting around it it can be i i need a good mixture as well i like to do stuff um we're at the stage where we usually do like one big vacation a year like maybe fly somewhere and then maybe one smaller vacation um so it, but but i'm the same we we've been doing um we, we, we do disney sometimes we do we've been doing the disney cruises lately which is relaxing but it's not relaxing you still go 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 uh the nice thing about cruises i found was is you can always go back to the room and sit on the patio or relax if you want to you kind of have that option but um I agree with you. We actually, when we went on our honeymoon, we went to Dominican Republic and we booked like a 10 night stay in this suite, like on the beach in this, in this, um, this really nice, like, um, resort. And we actually like left two days early. We were really? just bored. Yeah. We just um, said we want to change our flight and leave and go home. Um, it was just, it was too long of a time, you know, it was just like, what, you know, you only do so much in a resort. So I, I feel the same way. I want to be doing something, even if it's Disney or an amusement park or whatever, at least you're going, you, you're constantly doing something. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate just like laying on the beach for eight hours. I can't, you know, maybe like a half a day and that's like of your entire vacation, but I'm the same way. I like to do stuff or see new things. My brother is like that. He does the same vacation every year. He goes down to South Carolina or whatever, and he just stays on the beach for a week. Mm. I would go insane, let alone yeah. just not wanting to be in the sun for that long. Yeah, um, I, I I definitely am not a sit around on the beach person or whatever, um, but I, I do prefer to like relax on vacation. I Like not every day, but I I actually enjoy when we're on vacation and we get to the like if we get to the hotel room and it's like six o'clock and we're in for the night or something. I'm like, actually like pretty excited that got the air conditioner on super cold. Maybe I'm sitting in my bed with my switch and whatever. Like I said, not the whole vacation, but sometimes you just need that break because vacations can be stressful and you do want to make sure they're not. We do Disneyland a lot. And you know, like if you go to Disneyland for like three, four or five days, and if you go to Disney world or Disneyland, your feet get really tired. And if you, try to go from rope drop to the end of the day, the next day is going to be miserable. You, you got to pace it. So I agree. You got to pace it. We, we've, we started trying to go back to the room midday when it gets really hot Yep. and then come back 
maybe like four o'clock when it's getting, yeah. getting you know, it'll start to get a little cooler and we're a little more energized. Um, but I think you got to work that in. It's vacation. It's supposed to be relaxing. But in the end, you do what you want to do. Um, I had to look up what a quad bike was. That's like an ATV. Uh, yeah. Yep. Never I've rented an that. ATV on vacation. <laughs> no, I have not. But I did his point. <laughs> it must be a Brit thing. <laughs> What's next? What do we got? Um, Texas Troy says, question for Drew. After you beat Illusion Island with the family, will you reconsider Metroid Dread? I'm sorry. I will not. Um, I played the Metroid demo. I uh, Dread demo. I know that's not saying a lot, but... Uh, beat the demo. I just found metroid as a whole is not for me and it's sad you know I, it's it's not that so i hate good. it it's just it's yeah. not it's not for me i i've tried them i've tried the old old school ones i've tried um i tried the dread demo i've tried uh metroid prime I, I just can't get into them i just i just can't i cannot get into it so i don't think this is gonna but ori love ori that's a metroidvania ori's the best it really also, is. Texas Trey, how do you know he's going to beat Illusion Island? It could be too hard wow. for him. Wow. Could wow, be too John. difficult. And you don't deserve Metroid Dread, honestly. Mm. If you don't like Metroid Dread, it's so good. Yeah, that's fair. So good. I like this next question from Darth Platypus and John. I think there's only one answer I mean, you're going to say it at the same time. With the rumors of a new system coming out, what franchise would you like to bring back at launch title? Let's count at the same time. Three, two, one, punch it. Mario. What? No. <laughs> well, what? okay. Is the question saying bring back from when? Like, what, 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 punch out. The, the next switch. Answer. Which should... one? It says which franchise would you? It's not about what they should or what they're. What would you? It's the simple answer. It's punch out. All right. Do it again. All right. Three, two, one. Punch. Donkey Kong Country. Oh, my God. <laughs> I need a Donkey Kong game, man. You want 3D? Would you do a 3D? Or you I want do 2D? want Punch Out. Uh, no, I like the 2D. I like the 2D Donkey Kongs. They're okay. Um, no, I would love to see Punch Out too. As a launch title, though, we need a Mario game, a 3D Mario game. It's it's not about what we need, John. It's what do we want? I don't know if I. I love. I don't need that as the launch title. Oh my god. Can you imagine launching a Nintendo and saying we have punch out? I just <laughs> I don't know. It just seems weird to me. Like, OK. Mario, cool. Super Mario 2. Super Mario 2. Remake with new levels. Thanks. Doc. Good question. John doesn't didn't get it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Skinny Matt ass. So I've been trying to get my family to play more tabletop games. Over the past year, yesterday I finally picked up Castle Panic from one of the what local gaming game. stores. Is there any tabletop games you've recently grabbed for the family? Did they enjoy it, and would you recommend it? Uh, well, my kids again are seven and nine, so I get stuck playing Clue Junior and Bluey Monopoly. But I will say, Bluey Monopoly. I That's will great. say that um, depending on how old your kids are i mean if you have not played villainous i love villainous i try to make my wife play at least once every other week um it's such a fun game and the, the beauty about villainous is you're really playing your own game you're playing your own board you're playing your own objectives and the other players are just trying to make it harder for you to meet your objectives um super cool and there's the thing about also i like about villainous is that there's so many characters you can get i will say stay away from the marvel one the Marvel one, they they changed the rules. It's super weird. It's not that fun. And I don't know about the Star Wars one, but I have a feeling they changed the rules in that one as well. Just stay to the classic villainous, and there's endless numbers of characters that you can get. You can even be the one and only best villain of all time, the Horn Cane from the Black Cauldron. Yes, John, you can be, and that's a fact. <laughs> um, but villainous is, is, would be my... If I could get my family to play villainous, I'd play every night if they wow. would play. I love that game. Yeah. How about you? What, I mean, your kids are old. What's your? Do you know Castle Panic? I I don't even think that's a real game. I think Skinny Matt just made it up. Uh, I can't get my kids. I have tried to get my kids to play board games with me. My wife doesn't really like board games. I have never played a full game of Risk in my life because I can't find anyone to play with. Uh, I can't get my kids to play Catan with me. 
I have mm-hmm. Catan. I'm so excited for it. We played one game one time. This game took an hour and 20 minutes because we Oof. had to learn the game and play it. And an hour 20 is not even that long. Once you learn and a game, you feel like you're committing to it. Like you're going to play it again. Like yeah, what... then you play it again. It'll be like 45 minutes, right? Yeah. Every time I mention playing Catan, she goes, it's so long. And I go, we had to learn the game. Mm-hmm. Let's just play it. Now we have to learn it again because I haven't played it in years now. I can't get them to play Catan. I see the little expansion editions and whatever. What about this Catan and whatever? They won't play that with me. I also love Ticket to Ride. You know, it's. it's I almost bought that today. It was on. I it's a fun it game. Yeah, it's it's not like, you know, the most strategic or whatever, but it's fine when you have kids and whatever. I love it. I like building the trains. I like some of the strategy. You know, it's just fun. And we have the New York edition, the regular edition. They have other stuff. Um, we've played that more than any other game. But even then, I still can't get my kids to play. I'm like, hey, who wants to play Ticket to Ride? My nope. kids love board games, but it's just still like hungry, hungry hippos, candy land. It's just, they're... oh my God. I know. It's like when you get older, it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't mean, like I said, they love it. They want to play, play, play those things. But I, did you I'm ever hope... get the Slay the Spire board game? Because you can, <laughs> I did them, not get them I don't to think play this, that one. I don't think they don't want to play that. I don't think so either. <laughs> um, Let's read question. Ibisel's weird question. Ibisel. Would you help out a neighbor or relative? This is very specific. With downed <laughs> wood, I'm, I'm assuming a fallen tree after a storm. If so, would you expect them to offer you anything for helping out? So, funny story, Ebisel, is that I actually had two trees fall almost in my driveway, but they're like, like almost touching my driveway there. That fell Christmas Eve morning. We had a big storm. They're still fucked in there. And that's my own house. Um, so the point is, is would I help them? Probably not because I don't even do my own property. But if I were to go help my neighbor um, or a relative in that case, I would not expect them to offer me anything. That's just a goodwill chore. Unfortunately, um, you will not be compensated. Um to quote the one and only great Willy Wonka, you get nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, would you feel differently? I don't know. Eva Sell's uh, mom gives me downed wood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm out of this. I, okay. This is so oddly specific. And, you know, you live in a freaking forest. Whatever. I'm not helping my neighbor with downed wood. We barely have any trees over here. But the answer is no. I, I would not expect anything. Yeah. I, I think it just depends on your relationship with your neighbors when uh, you help very out. Very true. Very, yeah. that you know, great point. You know, all my neighbors I'm pretty friendly with, so. Yeah. I mean, if you if you spent, like, six hours doing something serious or whatever, you know, I mean, what are they going to give? They're not going to pay you. Maybe they'll, like, invite you over for dinner. But if I'm volunteering for, for a chore like that, I would just be like, hey, listen, I can help, but I got to be done by 10. I got to be done by noon. Like, I, I, w- I would say that up front, so it's like the expectation is I know I'm not getting to more than two hours. Right. I think two hours is that limit for me there. If I'm helping yeah, somebody out yeah. with a chore. Yeah, I would. I would. Have, it's, it's like asking people to move too. like, oh, uh, yeah. You know, F- when F- you're asking people to help you move, you are asking for something huge. That's you, you're feeding them pizza and you're going to get them some beer after or something like that. Right. That's yeah. different. But if you're just, hey, come help me with some, tr- you know, some, some down to wood. I, I'm sorry. I've just never heard it called that. If your neighbor is like a like a. um you know, a widower or, you know, a single, a single mom or whatever. And she's like, uh, can you help me with some downed wood? I'd be like, are we doing it? Was that? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you my downed yeah. wood. You and then you it. go over and you're all, you know, and she's like, okay, yeah, the tree is over there. <laughs> the tree, <tree's> there. <laughs> uh, like, damn it. Well, John, what do we have coming up in the next couple of weeks? Uh, not too much, but WrestleQuest comes yes, out August I forgot 8th. about that until I just read that. WrestleQuest, you got to finish your Army of Ruin game by then. Oh, it's done. That, yeah. that game just gets shelved. But now, now I'm questioning if I play Zelda or not. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Um, and then the physical edition of Dead Cells Return to Castlevania. Um, that game has been out for a while, but the it's physical version DLC? comes out. How do you buy a physical version of DLC? It's just... <gasps> They just give you the whole package with everything in it. Weird. That comes out August 11th. Um, do you think WrestleQuest has sports story potential? 
No, I think it's going to be more polished. I think it has more golf story potential. I think mm. it's going to be, could potentially be a great game. Mm. You know what? Maybe I won't buy this first day. Because this is one of those games, like, if someone said it was broken, like, sports story, i just be like, oh, I don't need it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, like, I'm, I'm excited to play it, but I don't need to play this game. Right. Like, sports story, I needed to play that game because the golf story was just so good. Right. Exactly. Wrestle we'll Quest see. looks like it'll be good. I don't think I'm going to play it just because there's other things, but it looks like it'd be really good. But if it is really, really good, I may, I may be convinced. And you like wrestling games. I, Oops. yeah, and I like these older wrestlers like Macho Man. And all. That was the era that I actually watched wrestling. I haven't yeah. watched any of the wrestling since then. But if the game is really good, I might be convinced. But otherwise, it's not that it's not bad or it looks bad. I think it looks really good. Um, but, you know, just there's so many, only so many games you can play. You got to pick and choose. Agreed. Got some Bayonetta going on. I got Pikmin 4 getting ready oh. to go. I still want to well, play the Lara Croft games. There's just a lot going on. Well, folks, if you took away anything from this episode tonight, one, I was sad, and two, go donate some money. Donate, 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 and you're doing lots of prizes, get lots of balls. What's better than that? Yep, we've got a new channel, Dads in Denver Live. You can find it on our Discord, and uh, yeah, let's do it for the kids. First, I'm really excited. This is our first uh, charity marathon. I'm, 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 I'll be ready to go for 12 hours, not 24. I'm too old for 24. Sounds dirty. That 24 just seems so cruel. Like it's like when it's done, your sleep schedule is all off. You feel miserable. You know how you, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can't even imagine. But for 12. Now, if Man. one of us falls asleep, what are we doing? I don't think I didn't fall asleep during the day, but I don't know. My time, the time zone's different. It should be fucked up. I'm absolutely going to draw a mustache on Koozie if he falls asleep. Okay. Yeah. I don't expect it to happen, but it could. Sure. It could. It could. All right, dude. Later, Drews. Peace. Later, dads. Good night. The Dads After Dark show is part of the Nintendo Dads family of podcasts. You can subscribe to us anywhere podcasts are available, including Google, Overcasts, and whatever. If you're using Apple Podcasts, don't forget to leave us a five-star review. You know you want to. Be sure to join us on the Nintendo Dads Discord in our Dads After Dark channels for some naughty after dark talk. Leave us a voicemail with Spotify for podcasters and we'll play it on our next show. Check our podcast description for the link. Follow us on threads or TikTok at NDadsAfterDark. Say hello, won't you? A big thank you to Family Jewels for our show's music. That's all for tonight. Good night, you sexy dads. Sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs>